welcome, welcome to Circle Makers TV. Oh, I've got to press that button to stop the echo, as we usually do. And it's Matthew Williams, slightly different camera angle. Um, you know, just like a change, uh, CV face on. But um, we've uh, we've got a very interesting guest in the studio this week. I think uh, we should uh, probably go over to. Uh, to the uh, the hot seat as, as soon as we possibly could, and uh, and see who this is because this this is this is really going to be a revolutionary. I mean, uh, this is going to be a, a a landmark episode, I'm sure. So, okay, um, louder. Somebody saying louder. Nikki, louder. I don't play golf. Sorry. Um, okay. Right here we go. Here is who is in the hot seat. I am the host of the show. I don't understand what you mean. I mean, yeah, okay, take the mask away, but I mean, look, I really am the host of the show. I mean, I look like you, I sound like you, and I even dress somewhat like you. So, let me just see. There we go, look. Got exactly the same shit on. Look, I'm, I'm coming over there, mate, I'm sorry. Well, actually, this is my show, and I that didn't work quite as well as I thought it would. <laughs> what did I do wrong? Put it, put it on fast forward. Put it, put it on fast forward. So it was on in the wrong place. Yeah, that's good, isn't it? Right, that's Circle Makers TV for you. Uh, right, well, welcome <laughs> to Circle Makers Fuck Up TV. Um, that's a bollock. And the bollocks keep coming. So here we are. Matthew Williams is the guest of Matthew Williams. He is the hostage of Matthew Williams. Matthew Williams is the hostage of Matthew Williams, is the guest of Matthew Williams. Matthew Williams does not have a guest this week. Matthew Williams is the guest this week. So, Mr. Matthew Williams, would you like to um, tell us anything about uh, something? you've done you know or the look I I'm sorry I I just wouldn't believe anything that man on that seat says Yeah, exactly. What is actually going on with today's show? I have no idea what is going on with today's show. Um, so, right, we've got some people in channel, and uh, we're going to be taking questions, and we're going to do a little back garden tour of my... Da -da 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 -da. Scrapbook. Matt's a twat scrapbook. Okay? So looking at camera. Um, this is a book I've made. You know, it's 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 a very limited release. It's a one edition. And um, it's basically got uh, lots of uh, newspaper articles in it uh, which were printed by the British national media about myself. So I thought what we'd do is we... What? We've got an echo. We've got an echo, 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 echo. What have we got going on? Echoes. Oh dear. Have we got echoes? What are we doing? We've got echoes. I know what this is. 
Hang on. I'll have to do this. This is technical stuff. Oh, no technical stuff at this time of night. I'll just take webcam. Da. Mute. No. One, one person. Oh, okay. Uh, right, okay. Somebody, somebody's saying we've got the echo. Anyway, Crop Circles TV tonight is about Matt the Twat. So, Matt the Twat. Um, and Matt has, in, in, fact, in fact, been asked to uh, twat a cat on a TV programme, but I'll go into that. You can have a look at my Facebook page for uh, information about how to twat a cat on uh, my Facebook page. Um, but uh, we thought we'd just have a little look at the media and uh, what they've been saying about crop circles over the years. So, why don't we start with um, this little thing. I've got my camera set up in a different position today. Do, 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 do. Hang on. Let me see if we can get it down onto this crap. I'm, I'm, I'm amazed I can actually even speak tonight, but uh, <laughs> there you go. Gazette and Herald. Right. Now this is what we're going to do. We're going to zoom in on some of these articles and I'm going to read them out and we're going to take the piss out of them or discuss them. Sound like a good deal? Yes, I hear you say. Um, that's me being me back to me, you see. So I'm, I'm trying to reply to myself. It's, uh, it's, a bit, it's a bit of a sort of awkward situation with, uh, with uh, that sort of thing. You know, when you've got like a person who's trying to make believe that they're somebody else and uh you know I, I i i i do try to sort of you know put myself across as a honest person and i hope people believe me but um maybe they don't i mean maybe sometimes they they don't actually believe don't that i'm <sighs> i'm sorry mate <laughs> you're just you're just a pale imitation you're not you're not the real thing you're you just you know you're trying to be like the real thing but you're not the real thing Hoaxer, that's what you are. Fucking hoaxer. Fucking hoaxer. Yeah? That's all you are, mate. Right, well, um, we'll less of him and more of me. And, uh, yes, Devises Gazette and Herald. Now, this is a local newspaper in Wiltshire. And um, it's quite a big bloody sheet as well, you know, which is why I've had to buy myself a big uh, book like this. And... Uh, Basically, what you've got is squaring up to circle hoaxes, and in the dock of crop circles, a man became the first person in Britain yesterday to be charged in connection with creating crop circles. Matthew Williams, 29, was arrested after crop circle pattern after a crop circle pattern appeared in a farmer's field in West Overton Wilts in July. He was charged with one count of criminal damage, and will appear before magistrates on Monday. Crop circles have been made, uh, have been blamed on freak weather, hoaxes, and aliens. So there we are. So, right, okay. Uh, a UFO hoaxer yesterday became the first person in Britain to be prosecuted for creating crop circles. Max Matthew Williams, 29, was admitted damaging crop circles on. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Uh, I just real this is not this is not going to be a very interesting show is it really I mean I should just probably put these things up online I don't know what you think <laughs> why no guest this week why no guest this week yes exactly that's the people in channel are asking why is there no guest this week it's because nobody stepped up to the plate <laughs> that's why there's no guest this week nobody stepped up to the plate so what we have is um, mr. Michael Glickman here Mr. Michael Glickman. Ew. No man could make these. And, uh, last week farmers in Marlborough and Devizes spoke of their anger after a hate of sp uh, a spate of crop circles attracted hundreds of sightseers to their land. And, uh, the farmers blame crop circle enthusiasts themselves for creating these circles. Professor Michael Glickman, who spoke at a crop circle conference in Devizes two weeks ago, refutes their claims. There he is. Mr. Michael Glickman, down now. Right, you know, that, that nobody could walk into that field at night and make a crop circle. You know, let's picture the size of you know, this man, you know, and walking into a field and actually do 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 at night. You know, this is impossible. Okay. Um, 
So, yes, basically we're going to go through, uh, you know, some of the stuff that, that's happened to us tonight. Um, now, if you're, not, if you're a newcomer to this uh, channel, and uh, it's a very hectic channel tonight, it's a very weird channel tonight, we've even got, uh, we've even got some sort of weird uh, graphics to bring up for you later on. Um, uh, then, beer. Beer, alcohol. We shall begin. Yeah, why do I think I've no guests this week? Because there aren't that many circle makers out there. <laughs> and there ain't many who want to fucking speak. That's the bottom line. Um, but the bottom line for me is that Circle Makers TV is about you asking questions and getting answers. So let's go across to the questions and we shall ask my assistant. And the same, can they view the uh, live stream chat in the actual um, video screen? Because there's a lot of scrolling up and down or something. Can they view the live stream chat? <laughs> yes, they can. They can do it like this. Uh, they can view the chat stream window by scrolling down. And then what you do is you click on a little box on the side. Um, it's a little, little sort of arrow thing. And it pops it out into another box. And when you pop it out into another box, you can put it on your desktop where you want to. So you can keep the Circle Makers TV in the background, and you can type on top and watch Circle Makers TV happening in the background. So uh, that's possible. It's called a pop-out. So press that button and see what it does, and everything will go wrong now. Um, so, without a guest, Mr. Matthew the Circle Maker has decided to show you his archive of newspaper stuff it's really impressive because we've got uh, where is it it coming here it's really impressive because we've got this camera showing us that it's the war of the swirls the war of the swirls hmm yes yes and aliens are coming to get you by Nigel Curtin okay a mysterious pattern has appeared near Lockridge okay Dion's saying Matt forget that let people ask you questions yeah let people ask me questions yeah let's, let's just do that Matt can you please do a video report on the current plant growth status in the usual hotspots I have been up this winter to check for myself. Just curious. Yes. Um, plant growth. Are you referring to the uh, extended plant growth in certain places as ghost circles? Is that what you're interested well, in? You're I'm saying in the usual hot spots, so... Yeah. Right. Um, well, we don't... Um, we don't have any sort of people out there doing research as we're circle makers so you know i don't i don't know if there's any uh fields that have shown up yet i i haven't been out flying recently so i haven't seen any crop circles that are oh. yeah. yeah so right guys you got the full full mm. full steam ahead on the live chat so questions yep. please yeah questions 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 we're going to go through the yeah. uh. Sorry, I know it's going to be really boring. It's just me. I'm sorry. Okay, we got one. Matt, tell us why ghost formations appear in winter. Ghost appear, ghost formations appear because the grass is planted down in such a way, uh, not the grass, the crop is planted down in such a way that um, when it's condensed, the, the earth will react differently to moisture. So um, the heat and the air will see the ground differently so whatever minerals are being used in the ground will be extracted by the plants as they grow 
and if you've got a lit area receiving UV rays and you've got an unlit area not receiving UV rays that'll be different as well so you've got a, comp a compressed area where people have actually been walking around and you've also got an area which is now more exposed or less exposed because of shadowing and uh, this does have an effect on the uh, the, 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 the type of um, result uh, yeah hang on um, he said uh, ghost ghosting wasn't it um, well, there was two questions, weren't there? The first Go, one... So, sorry, I'm, I'm telling you about how, how um, phototropism works. Um, can you please do a video report on the current plant growth status in the usual hotspots? Can we do a current plant growth... <laughs> Matt, have you had a drink? But can yeah. you please do a video report on the current plant growth status in the usual hotspots? I haven't been up this winter to check for myself. Just Matt's curious. Matt's had a drink and he's had his antidepressants. That's the problem. <laughs> Matt, Matt is uh, uh, a scared little kitty. Everything, everybody thinks that Matt is such a such a such a powerful circle maker and <laughs> yeah. and out there could kill them but matt is inside a little weak kiddie you see and uh, he needs these little things like alcohol and uh, antidepressants to uh, to prop him up so yeah he's turned into a bit of a muppet this week i'm sorry so well we can go over to chaos <laughs> um that's chaos what, that's what that's what life does to you sorry folks <laughs> Um, yeah, Chaos is asking, given you have no de guest this week, who would be your ideal top three guests you could get on if you could? Well, there's obviously, um, I think we referred to him as uh, the, the master in the past, the master um, that we would like to, you know, have on the show. That would definitely be the, uh, <laughs> it's like, it, it, it's like, you know, Picasso and Van Gogh, you know, it's it's what which, which do you prefer? You know, it's like there are circle makers out there. Who do we prefer to come on the show? Um, I would say uh, probably the people that are doing the most work. That's who I'd like to have on the show, but um, they're not necessarily able to do that because they are circle makers and they are doing illegal stuff and they're very worried about their activities well, getting them into are, trouble and jobs and stuff there are ways and means and well there's a will there's a way well there's masks you see and masks and things we we do try we do try we, we're looking down these avenues we know we're do it dealing with very dangerous subjects here and we're we're touching on sensitive ground and and you know I, i've been expecting a potential knock on the door because of <laughs> it you know uh you know, you can see why I'm a heightened tension. It's not just because I'm doing a bloody live stream TV channel. It's because, um, you know, all of this that we do uh, does actually put ourselves on the line, really, doesn't it? <laughs> and, you know, for us to furnish you with the information. Oh, what have I got on screen? I've got website Andy Collins. <laughs> got com. This is unbelievable. This is this is the best show so far. You're not getting paid for that then? I'm, I'm not, no. You see, <laughs> this is the thing. When I'm pushing the buttons and I've got a guest, I've got something I can do. When I'm actually trying to interview myself, <laughs> I can't fucking do well, it. Here, here's a bit of a loaded question from uh, Andrew Perker. He's Andrew saying, Perker. Matt, I had an email sent to me with this question. Yeah. If you were to be given an Oscar to a member of the crop circle community for their contribution to the crop circle phenomenon, who would your you award go to? Crop circle award for the crop circle phenomena. Well, it's got to be Colin Andrews, isn't it? I mean, you know, because he's... It's got to be Colin. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I would say... It, 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 but that's one person, you see. You're saying, if I had a... I, I see Colin and Busty as the the same type of unit, you know, in the way they worked, um, and they were very close uh, friends, and they were doing a lot of work together. But I mean, you know, if you have to pick one or the other, I'd say well, it has to be Colin because Colin is the spokesperson. So Colin Colin would have to get the medal. So we need Colin on, really, don't we? We do need Colin, and he did say he would come. 
but he's been off to Las Vegas, not Los Angeles or something, I think it was, Los Angeles, and uh, uh, yeah, he's uh, a little bit tired, so he couldn't, um, he couldn't make it this week, so. Well, regarding the question, we've got Simon saying, how about Doug Bauer? Uh, Is he not up there? Well, I would. Um, <laughs> Yeah, see my stress levels just go through the roof here because um, there are things I can't tell you. <laughs> uh, yeah, the, the the trouble is with Doug, um, I don't know where he lives. <laughs> I don't know where he lives, and I have never been given this information by John, who does know where he, where he lives, and uh, John refuses to give me information about uh, Doug's address so that I can write to him or speak to him because D John is acting as his agent and uh, John Lundberg acts as Doug Bauer's agent <laughs> okay um, and that's very contentious information I'm afraid to say <laughs> but it is actually the truth um, John Lundberg is acting as an agent for uh, Doug Bauer and unless I present large amounts of cash and a very uh, a very presentable offer that John and co likes, then then it's not going to happen. Um, I am not to be furnished with this information, and I haven't managed to find it myself. I've looked, I've tried some old numbers, I've I've gone through some old stuff that I had, and I don't seem to be getting anywhere with it. But uh, if anybody does have a contact address for Doug, I would be very interested to contact him and. Uh, and say, would you like to come on the show? But um, if John has anything to do with it, I, I think, um, you know, we will have to sort of be on a 20% retainer. So, uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, it's not very pretty, is it, that, that, that side of crop circles? <laughs> um, I've, never, I've never really fantasised on the money aspect of it, but, uh, you know, when you get money involved in things stuff starts going wrong and being a bit awkward and <laughs> uh, Dion saying but that hasn't got anything to do with money Matt well it doesn't have anything to do with money but it does have a lot to do with uh, calling it philosophy <laughs> well uh, it's not the philosophy of crop circles because at the end of the day um, if, if I have to contact a person through his agent and you know the the end result is that nothing gets done um i can't forward anything on you know i mean maybe i could maybe i could maybe i could i don't know john probably watches these so john can i please send you something to send on to mr doug bauer to ask him whether he would like to come on to this show because i don't have those details please mr jo mr john <laughs> circlemakers.org Okay. You know, the Holy Grail or dot org. Can we please have Doug's telephone number or an address? Okay, I'm sure grovelling has, has been received. Should we go yes. to the white room? Um, Matt, who do you think made Barbary <sighs> Castle formation? I, I think Shelley's an angel, don't you? Don't, did you think Shelley's an angel? She's pulled me out of the pit here. <laughs> I didn't know what I was going to do tonight. I was like, I'm going to do this thing and it's going to be so exciting because I'm just going to talk about shit and, and like I was like mm. I was going into meltdown mode <laughs> and uh, Shelley has uh, stepped in and become a presenter and, and, and I haven't even got a camera on her. It's no not, don't because I'm blushing Oh do you want a camera? <laughs> Do you want can I, can I come over here? Uh, are you, have you just called me by my name? Dion's just noticed that you aren't calling me Agent S Mr Matthew <laughs> This is Circle Makers TV That's gratitude folks <laughs> Look, look Insert the microphone into the pint glass. It works much better when you do that. <laughs> right, okay. Uh, sorry. Anyway. Okay, yeah. Precious. Let's get back on track. I mean, it's, it's a precious thing, isn't it? I mean, you're doing television like this, and you, you, you're, meant to, you're meant to come up with the goods. Yeah, you've got to have the visuals, you've got to have the speech, you've got to have the... Doo -doo 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 and the beer. And you've got to have the <laughs> dancing girls, and, you know, and it's like... Uh, <sighs> You know, this is Circle Makers TV. What do you want? You got a circle maker? You got nice looking lady, but she won't let me point a camera at her. To everyone in the in the uh, <laughs> chat room, I would take full advantage of 
Matt's mental health at the moment. He's obviously had a drink, uh, so I think pop um, out the questions. The camera is moving. <laughs> it's going to turn on to you. I'm oh, okay. Uh, yeah, you okay. Uh, here it goes. Here's the camera's going. Hang on. Oh, oh, oh hang on. I've press the button now. I am completely <laughs> drunk. I'm sorry. I'm completely drunk. They're um, saying, Matt, the microphone is too far away now. My, the microphone's too far away. Oh, do, 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 do not get me. No. Okay. Right. Try that. Zip. Oh, my God. It's a Shelly. <laughs> oh. Agent S. Uh, Shelly Agent is... S. Yeah, Agent, Agent S. Agent S is sober, a- folks. I thought you said anal S, then. Well, that's just your, your is head, isn't it? Yes, it is. I do think The like dog that. is out in the garden. She tends to be very vocal uh, huh? when there's activity going on. They're asking, where's, where's uh, Cassie, your dog? <sighs> Cassie has to go outside because <laughs> when we're talking, Cassie would perceive that... Um, we were um, barking at each other. She thinks that when I'm speaking to Shelley, I'm barking. So I'm going, bop, bop, bop. And then Catsy has to go, bop, bop, bop. So she goes, bop, 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 bop. And we all go, bop, 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 like three big barking heads. So it's not a good idea to have Cassie in because she just gets in the middle of things and, and literally wants to... Uh, she, she's more of an egotist than me, really. You know, she, she'll just get right on this mic and uh, that'll be the end of it. She, we could probably bring her, her in a little bit later, perhaps. Perhaps, um, yes. But it's, this is Circle Makers TV, which is about this. It's about this stuff. Okay. Like Gazette and Herald look, you know? Remember that one? Gazette and Herald? People can't make crop circles <laughs> at night. <laughs> yeah, look, look, crop circles. Yeah, right, Gazette and Herald. Yeah, so um, local newspaper that took the piss out of me when I got arrested. So I ended up doing them a fucking logo. I ended up doing them a logo of their bloody, you know, newspaper in the field. And I thought, well, okay then. I don't like fonts. I don't like doing writing. Writing is crap because, uh, you know, you're actually telling people what they must interpret. You know, you, with words, you actually you, you demand a thing. You know, with, when you say a word, it is that thing. You know, so you have to follow the train of thought. So with words and letters, I'm, I'm, I, I, I kind of pull back from them as a circle maker. I like the abstraction of, um, I like the abstraction of geometry and artistry. So anyway, but there we are. There we are. We went out and made the circle, and it was like that, and it's pretty bloody good. I'll just show you. <laughs> Can you tell us about a bit about the Milk Hill script, Matt? Oh, I can tell you what you want, mate. What do you want? Milk Hill script, we got loads of it. Go on, then. Gazette and Herald, yeah? I did that in the dark, yes? I did it to challenge my... To ch- well, it's not a challenge, because, you know, the thing is, I have to say this, it sounds stupid. As a circle maker, right, it sounds stupid. It's like, I did this for you, I did this for you people out there, yeah? It's like a demonstration circle. The farmer um, agreed to it because it was a known man-made thing so that people could see that it was a demonstration Um, and they would see the effects were the same in this circle as in others. Nobody took any interest in it because it's a man-made circle. It was known as a man-made circle. But I did it at night. I did it at night and I managed to produce the G and H quite well I thought so that is pretty impressive because if you know, you've ever built fonts in, in applications fonts a bloody rock that is pretty fonts awesome fonts are yeah. fucking rock excuse my language but I never do um, yeah fonts are fucking rock because you notice the slightest thing wrong with a font and you notice it it's like Ooh, yeah but with a crop circle you allow so much to be wrong you allow so much to be wrong and you kind of don't you don't perceive that 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 yeah it, th- those mistakes are there but um with the lettering on this if i'd made if i'd made a mistake on that you'd really know it and it's like it's not bad it's not bad for rapeseed i mean mm. come on fuck excuse my <laughs> <laughs> it is good Co- it is good for rapeseed rape seed is a thick planted crop it's crap i didn't want to work in rapeseed but it was all they had so I used what I could, and I got the and wrong. I couldn't kind of work out where I was, what I was doing. And that's because I was working freehand, mainly, in that area. Um, yeah, so 
But the funny thing is with that as well, uh, that it looked pink <laughs> for some reason. I don't. I don't <laughs> it looked pink. What looked pink? The, the right. whole, the whole, um, the whole underneath of the crop looks pink, and yes. I don't know. It's probably my colour vision because I've got yeah, colour vision I'll problems. Yeah, that was your colour vision. Yeah. I mean, that's pink, yeah? That's pink. That's... Oh, there's a little bit of pink on his trousers. I think that's actually something... Oh, it's my colour vision. Yeah. Forget yeah. it. Okay, yeah. I've had this for years. I get really confused with colours. So, okay, we'll go on to another one. Yeah. Right, uh, Field of Dreams. Uh, something... What's that then? <laughs> The Olymp oh, Olympics, yeah. The Olympics, done by John Lundberg and the Circle Makers for News of the World, The Sun. And I believe it was done at night. And I don't think they had any... I don't know if they had any lights for that. It just appeared. You know, just appeared. So, you know, again, another good example. Um, I like to do these things at night, you know, when it's dark, properly, in the dark. Because then it proves you can do it. And this is where I went down to New Zealand. And New Zealand, uh, the Japanese television crew from Nippon TV uh, took us down to New Zealand on an aircraft. Three of us. Uh, I'm just trying to remember. Uh, hang on. Oh, God, it must have been about 2000 and 2001 or something like that, I think it was. So about 10 years ago now. And we made replica, we replicated a circle that appeared in Allington, you know. And that's the newspaper stuff to do with that. And that was uh, f uh, Swindon Evening Advertiser. Not, you know, not, not exactly the front page of the New York Times. But uh, uh, still, you know, we go out there to do stuff in the night. Uh, and, and show that we're actually able to complete this stuff in complete darkness. That was a classic example. New Zealand. Yeah, it's on my YouTube channel. Have a look at the video footage. So if you go to um, www.youtube.com um, and then you type in a slash and then you put uh, truthseekers666, you will get to my webpage. If you then look for... Oh, God, hang on, what is it called? It's called New Zealand Crop Circle. Um, Japanese Japanese New Zealand Crop Circle. Type in that. I think you'll get to it somehow. But, you know, in there, you can see that we went out at night with a, with a camera crew, and uh, it was complete darkness. They had film lights ready to turn on at the end of our challenge to see what we'd done, and, and in the middle. Um, but we, we started in the dark, we went out with our design. We completed the uh, the formation in about three hours, something like that, three or four hours, and uh, we were out of there uh, just about the time that they were expecting us. And uh, it was still dark, you know. And during this procedure, they turned the lights on twice to see uh, the outcome of the circle. And you can see here that you know the sort of the end result, but. Uh, uh, yeah. um, can I, mean, I just ask you, know. you Matt, um, who is it? Simon, I think, is just quoting the Olympic rings, and he said that was actually done in daylight because the photos are on oh, the was circle it? maker's oh, website. It was done in daylight, was it? See? Yeah. Now, this is the thing, right? Okay, right. I know there's this, there's this kind of... You know there's this tension thing going on because, I mean, I'd love to be able to, you know, bring all the circle makers on the show Um some of the circle makers that want to be well known um, as being we are the circle makers that's you know we're the big guys we're the big guys circle makers those guys sort of missed the, missed the point I think with trying to um, do some of this stuff I, I, I don't know I, I disagree with the way they do it because they they'll do it day daytime you know and they'll they'll sort of attract criticism then you know because people will say well yeah it was daylight you know you did it in daylight it was easy you had you had cranes and cameras and teams of people and it's like well no do it at night do it at night do it at night in the complete frigging darkness and film it properly now okay 
fair play to John. He has done this on a number of occasions, but if he did that in daylight, it's bad. It's I, 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 I disagree with those. Um, it's not to say John's a bad person. It's just I disagree with the concept of that type of uh, circle being done in the daylight. You know, it's like, God, challenge yourselves, you know. But you've done it in the daylight, haven't you, for commissions? Yeah, we had to do it. We, we had to do the R thing in the daylight. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, but, you know, I, I've gone full circle on that. I say to people now, it's like, no, I don't want to do it in the day. Daylight, crap. Do it not. Do it at night. You want to see a circle? Let's do it at night. You know. Andrew Perker asks quite a good question, actually, Matt. Um, when the circle season kicks off, mm. will you be out and about in the fields interviewing the public and show interviews on your show? I could do. I could interview the public, but I mean, what do the public know? I mean, at the end of the day, if they haven't researched the subject properly, they'll be taking their their leads from whatever they've seen on TV. And I mean, I think generally people do kind of understand that circles are man-made. I mean, I wouldn't expect to find many people out there saying, no, absolutely not, you know, no, no. In the, I, could, I could do it, but, you know, it, it, it seems kind of cruel as well. I've always played this 50-50 game. I know what you're saying, Andrew. Um... I've played this 50-50 game in my in, in the way I approach people and I, I kind of look for their you know are they look do they look to me to be stable enough to be able to take this information are they going to get very depressed and do something really ridiculous if I tell them that circles are made by people yeah so if you're going out there um doing a an interview and and saying well we know people make circles and what do you think you know I I think the reactions are going to be quite quite uh, yeah, predictable and negative there's a saying though isn't there if, you, if you've always got what you always get you'll always get what you've always got so the fact that Circle Makers mm. TV is bringing people out into a new way of thinking yes. letting people know the truth I would say it's a great um, yeah. opportunity but to people, people are very different. people are very offended and then they move away uh, th what they do is they go oh I was fooled by that now let's walk away and they walk completely away from everything that they've experienced and that i think is a terrible shame that's the real problem we've got is that if if i go and tell somebody that a crop circle is man-made you know and it depresses them and they move away from the subject then what a waste what a waste because at the end of the day if you've seen a ufo or you've had a paranormal experience or you've had a synchronicity connected with a crop circle that's probably real you know that, that there's something there that comes into crop circles so i i don't want to destroy people's ideas and beliefs but isn't that egotistical to say that though like dion makes a good point there he yeah. says do you screen the viewers of this program if not then nope. it's the same as talking to the people out there in the field so well yeah i suppose so <coughs> we're, we're really doing it you know you you ask me any questions and i'll and i'll answer them at blah, blah. god my mouth is going Andrew Perker is saying, uh, just make sure they have nothing to hit you with first, Matt. <laughs> Remember Linda Morton Howe with the umbrella? Oh, God, the umbrella <laughs> incident, yeah. Yeah, the umbrella incident, <laughs> oh, God. She, you know, she's like, you know, she's she's only about sort of five foot high, and uh, and and, and, uh, and I was like standing behind her, and she's like, she's like I, I said, hey, excuse me, Linda, can I can I just ask? And she, she knew I was there in her perif <laughs> peripheral vision. She knew I was there, but she was kind of like trying to blank me. She was kind of like, she knew I was approaching, so she's like, mm, yes, the danger's approaching, danger approaching, danger approaching. And I went, uh, excuse me, Linda. And she just went, no, you just, could you, you just get away from me. Why do you <laughs> need to keep coming near me? And she's just like banging me with her umbrella. And it's like, ooh. Okay, okay, that's what devil level we're dealing in here. We got one from uh, GBZ. Um, mm -hmm. Now this is quite, I'd be interested in to know this. Matt. I do forgive do uh, Linda, by the way. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, well, we all do silly things, but, you know, come on, Linda. Well, maybe she just wanted to hit you with her stick. Hit maybe me with your rhythm yeah. stick. Yeah, right. Um, yeah, GBZ is asking, Matt. Does Matt believe there is a real phenomenon? Yes, absolutely. Um, I've always said in my interviews on the, U U uh, the YouTube channel that um, my...
paranormal research started back when I had a UFO sighting myself in, in uh, 1991, something like that. Um, I'd been interested as a child in, in books and reading things about the paranormal and, and, you know, as you do, as you do, but lots of other things as well. Um, but when I actually had a, a, a out of the blue sighting, a UFO sighting, it was just like, oh, I wasn't expecting that. Wow. Um, it changed my life. And I became a UFO researcher and started interviewing witnesses, going visiting uh, places, cases, trying to separate the bullshit from the, you know, the reality and seeing who are the mental patients and who are the, uh, you know, and, and people genuinely believe they see things that aren't gen that aren't really ufos but, you know there are the conditions that can can make you think you've seen things but take that all aside oops sorry i'm i'm terrible aren't i i you am are, i yes, am yes. I, this mic is right in my mouth and i honestly i heard myself belch then <laughs> through, through the mic and the headphones nice. it's terrible you can't do that well, we're getting you warts and all this week, aren't we, eh? Oh, God. Yeah, you see, I do take, I do three takes before I do a bloody um, YouTube video, but when I do uh, me on me, I'm uh, I'm not so good. So, uh, yes, uh, what are we on about? Um, well, Andrew's just continued there to say that I have come to terms with the fact that circles are man-made, but I still feel it's important to continue as it is a phenomenon out there yes. which deserves investigation but also gbz continues to say that so when agent d says that they are all man-made you should have argued the point that agent d said yeah. they're all man-made well yeah. they they are really probably all man-made um but <laughs> you know who can say what oh hang on let me i'm so slow right press the button who can say what does do the ones that are unknown because i mean that's unknown it's just an unknown um who does the small swirl circles who does them um that's the real phenomena uh what was the question sorry yeah but do you believe in a real phenomena so, so yes. okay. I believe in a real phenomena of crop circle things. Well, obviously the wind, for one, uh, can produce patterns in fields. I don't think it's capable of really producing complex patterns, but it could produce a, maybe a swirl or a circle. Uh, it may be irregular in shape. Um, the uh, the best. Sorry, what was the question? I'm, I'm, I'm just like right. Yeah, I'm jamming let's, up. I'm let's jamming. say, for example, that we all accept that circles are man-made. Yeah. If that's the case, mm. how come we're steering away from the fact that there is a phenomenon? And if so, what is that phenomenon? How can we how can we draw into that? I just need to get. I think I need to turn this camera off for a second and just breathe because I'm just like I'm. I'm. Do you know this is something that people don't realize about me as well as I have fucking panic attacks. I have fucking panic attacks, well, which is why I am a, such a stress puppy. So, so just move the camera. Move so the camera. Put it onto the chat room screen. Or <laughs> Take a chill pill. <laughs> <laughs> I want so much to do Circle Makers TV that it winds me up to the point where I end up taking bloody sedatives and alcohol and then ending up a bit silly on the bloody show. Oh, oh. That's a stupid thing, but that's me. That's that is what I'm like. That is that is typical, typical me. So Move it over to me, Matt, and I'll translate some. You questions. are you are getting the real, the real me. I assure you, and that's one thing I did want to get across on the show. <laughs> you were getting the real me tonight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's cut to a commercial. Cut to what's that? <laughs> Crossbone says, "Let's cut to a commercial." <laughs> oh, okay, right. Uh, Bit of humour there. Good humour. Yes, uh, cut to a commercial. <clears throat> and I was saying chill, mate. Yeah, sorry. Sorry, yeah, I just get, get a little bit... No Skype people. Yeah, if anyone wants to Skype in, then um, <laughs> yeah. feel free. If anybody wants to Skype the show, yes. <coughs> uh, Shelley's not been drinking tonight. In fact, I can prove it because she's... Shelley doesn't drink 
Shelly's Shelly doesn't all. drink, and I, I, let, let me see if I can press the button. And look, look, she's even got a bottle of water. It's a bottle of water. The, 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 the <laughs> bottle of water. So she is in control, and I am out of fucking control. And then this has been known for a long time. Okay, they're saying okay. back to the question. What right. question? Sorry. Who would want to Skype Matt in that condition? <laughs> I don't know, but it might be might be good to engage me because I yeah, need I, agree. I need engagement. You need challenging. I need. I need to. Sh- should we attempt to challenge your engaged. ego then, Matt? Yeah. Yeah. You know, should, should we have a little bit of fun with it? Go on then. Well, no, you ba- know. Bounce my bounce, bounce my ego. Go on then. Would you say that you are an egotistical person? Yes. Yes. Why, what makes you egotistical? Because I know I'm fucking right. Well, no. Well, 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 well no, because you're a circle maker who believes that most of them are man-made, but yet you believe in a phenomena, and you don't know what that phenomena is, so that kind of doesn't make you right, does it? I know something's out there. I don't know what it is, but I know that there's something, and it's it, it frustrates me. But how can you be it right frustrate, about something that you don't understand? It frustrates me and interests me. How mm-hmm. can you be right about something that you don't... How can you be ego, as in, I am right, if I am, well, there are flaws in your... I am right beliefs. in saying that I don't know. <laughs> so, therefore, <laughs> that's a double negative, and you, and you can't have those. Um, yeah, but that's what, that's what makes it an ego, isn't it? Is when you don't have evidence to back up what it is I'm you're selling. I'm absolutely certain that there's something out there I don't know. <laughs> yeah? yeah? Okay? So, um, I... I okay. think I think that it, th- these subjects are so. I'm gonna They're do, fun. Look, look, see, stress relief. Let's do some nicotine. <laughs> do some nicotine. Yeah. Thank you, Dion. <laughs> oh God, Dorothy is Dorothy in channel tonight? Oh, is, do you know what? It's not actually. Bloody hell! No, let's. Why isn't Dorothy in channel? <laughs> Dorothy would enjoy this show. <laughs> Dorothy would enjoy this show. He would. I think he would enjoy this show. Where's Dorothy? Right, okay. Yeah. Um, Men behaving badly. If every circle Matt has seen was made by that, doesn't mean all are. Oh, hang on. If every circle Matt has seen okay. was man made, so that doesn't do mean they all yeah. are. Do, do the thingy. Oh, so, so, no, right. Do the do the magic thingy that brings their screen up in the corner, and then I'll run it down the side so that people can actually see that I am answering the questions that are being asked. Do the magic. Uh, yeah. Firefox, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Is that right? Uh, yeah, something like that. Okay. That looks good. Okay, yeah. let's try that. What uh, push button? Does that work? No, it's a bit small. You need to make uh, it. Oh, hang on then. Sorry, technical. Just, just kind just of bring it up. It yeah, yeah, yeah. Up a bit. Yeah, nice. A, a, a fat wide one. That one. A fat wide one would be good. Cool. Yeah. That way, <coughs> people can see what's being typed in, yeah, and yeah. if I'm responding or not. Yeah. Okay, so you kind of get a flow. If that works. Takes the attention off you as well, then, doesn't it? Yeah, it does it about. The same, bigger. Can we do it a little bit bigger? Oh, bigger. Go on then. Oh, I messed with I messed with it. Oh now, no, that's it's, all, uh, it's all broken now. It's all broken. Okay, what's the question, Matt? Um, being that I saw that I I actually saw at the Rollwright Stone. What's your opinion? And there's a this is a small being I actually saw at the Rollwright Stone. What's your opinion? Okay. So do you want yep, me to follow that yep, link? Yeah. Okay, I'll have a look. Uh, and you might as well put the thing back because I. Eh. What? What's Hang happening on. now? Hang on, we followed the link, haven't we? So we're just going to check this out. Okay, I've followed the link that you're on about. Okay. Okay, I can see the link you're on about. I tell you what, switch your desktop presenter. Oh, God, I'm so silly. Switch your desktop presenter so that they can see what he's talking about. There's a link in channel. Andrew Perker has um, asked us to look into what... Uh, 
to it full screen uh, full screen thingy of the Firefox or whatever yeah okay so there's a being in here is there um, I don't know what this dude I mean you should Skype in Andrew I mean yeah. at the end of the day I mean I can talk to you more directly then I don't know what we're looking at here let's, let's bring it up well, full, full screen where's the full screen button Hold on. Uh, yeah, full screen okay I don't know what I'm looking at here. Well, there's two, isn't there? Scroll, it scroll down because I think he analyses it. Look, ah, oh, ah. Okay. Oh, I wasn't even looking there. No. I wasn't even looking at that. I was looking at the people. Yeah. So where's he? Where's this thing then? The thing is, it's in the middle of middle of a swirl of of a circle. Go back up. Go back up. Go back. I can't even see where he would think it is in that thing. Huh? Well, we're, we're not prepared, are we? We don't know where the question's going. Oh, I, I, I don't know. I, I really don't know what that thing is. Uh, scroll down even further. So see if, it's, if there's any more. Oh, oh it's go, over there. There we are. Right. Roll right stones. So there's something there, you reckon? Oh, jeez. I mean, it could be it could be one of these dark shapes that we've had. Um, they, they seem to be dark enough to almost... You know, subtract, subtract light off the film. You know, it, it's, it's. Um, uh, I don't know how to explain this. If you if you imagine, you know, you've got a dark day, and then the object that is 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 on the film looks darker than the darkest objects you can see in frame. You know, so it's it's something that's darker than. Now, what I would say in this instance is, it doesn't look that dark and 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 that big. So it might just be a bundle of um, a bundle of something. It might be a. Well, do you know what interests me actually is I don't really yeah. feel anything when I look at the, that. I just see that as I don't know. I don't know some crop being pulled up. But what I looked at first when I was maybe first we need to look at the chat channel because they're probably telling us why we're we're going completely Pete Tong on, on what we're talking about here. Uh, right. Okay. Black shadows in the formation. Okay, but what I was going to say is. This looks this looks like a human, yeah. Yeah. But if you think about scale and proportions, yes, this must be. I what, thought that was the figure he was talking about. Three times the size as the human yeah. that's closer to the camera. Yeah, I, so that I thought was what that was, struck me as strange. That's not what I thought what he was talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's initially what so I thought they were talking about. I would be more interested in that second. But that that's a, that's just a normal photo of somebody standing in a circle. I bet that's not. Well, not it actually looks like there's a. <laughs> no, that's a person. That's a person. Is it a person? That's well, a person. Yeah, but look at the size of this person. Oh, unless that's like a three-year-old or something. Oh, God. No, it's probably... I think we should go with the one, the bit that, that Mr. Perker thinks yeah. is weird. <laughs> weird. There's a person standing in a well, circle. Well, everyone's got their own okay. um, ideas, haven't they? Yeah. Uh, well, I'm not saying we should go with it, as in believe it or, or agree with it, but I, I think um, those two figures are actually people. Yeah, I think they are people. I'll click on the image, he says. The photos that we have seen in the crop circles of um, strange figures which appeared to follow a, a, a group of people out of the circle um, are quite interesting. And uh, a gentleman called Robert Fisher has taken a number of UFO photos, uh, photos as well. He's from Bristol. Um, I wouldn't have put him up to this, to be honest. I, I don't think he's quite up to the... Uh, to the to the technical challenge of doing it to be perfectly honest and uh i have my reasons for saying that without being um without revealing certain things which may let's put it i'll put it bluntly well without being unkind yes okay without being unkind i'm going to say that i don't think that mr robert fisher that took the photos of these black figures would have had the technical ability to do that and i and i'm and, and that sounds that sounds a bit uh, denigrating. I I just don't think he had that technical ability. You know you you know you know you 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 type of people that are very technical, and you know you type of people that are not very technical. I I don't think he was the type of person that could have done that. He was a camera user, and that was it. So um, yeah, and and he managed to catch these figures. You know, so maybe other people have managed to do it as well. Um, Can um, we satisfy my curiosity a minute? What what do people sort of um, how do people translate images in their own minds like this? For instance, I'm looking at it and I'm looking at if it was an object or a thing or a person, yeah. it would have weight to it. This looks translucent, like okay, um, let's go back to it. Yeah, 
this looks translucent. I don't know if that's the correct word. Like um, uh, transparent. So yeah. for it to be transparent, that it means you can see the forefront of the things that it's behind, yeah? Yeah. Um, the fact that there's no weight to it if, if it, if it weighed anything, there would be some kind of dent. Do you, do you know what I mean? Like, yes. How does somebody interpret an image like that? It's is it purely the fact that they can't understand what it is, so they assume it's something extraterrestrial? Yeah. Like, I mean, for me, I, I just can't look at that at all I and don't, see anything. I don't really see very much in that, to no. be honest. You know, it's, uh, it, it, it's something, but who knows what it is. Let's see what they're saying in um, chat. But what, what, right, okay, I mean, this is why we need Mr. S Mr. Perker, maybe he should Skype in. And if he Skypes in, then we can we can have a proper conversation about this because we, we're having to flip back back and forth between the um, uh, whether we're looking at the chat channel or whether we're looking at the picture. You see, so we have to kind of like flip between the two. Oh, okay. okay. This changes things. They're saying that this this wasn't like a, a thing that was there the whole time. It was actually something oh, that that disappeared. Right. Like, ah. sorry, I don't know the story. You see, I don't know the story at all. Um, I I haven't seen this photo before, so you're you're putting something in before me that I haven't seen, and uh, um, it could be could be a bird, could be a landed bird with a wing out, or something like that. You know, it it could be a shadow. Um, if you look at if you look at the the, I'm, I'm thinking to myself that the darkness of the object is about the same darkness you'd get at the edge of the uh, the, the crop anyway. Hang on, let's bring it back up. Let's bring it back up. Well, hang on. He's saying, look behind it. There is a flattened path behind the funky scooter. Funky oh. scooter? Hang on, let's see. This being moved on some funky scooter, then vanished into the tram line. What? This is real, Matt. Funky scooter? But then if somebody was curious about it, then they would have walked to it, i.e. that's why there would be a track to it. Huh? I don't, like, don't know what he's on about. But, I mean, I'm not taking. I'm not saying that you, you know, you didn't see this, but I don't. I really don't know what you're, you're representing here. Um, this is Andrew, I, Andrew I, Perker. He's saying it had two arms, two legs, about two point five feet tall. Bloody hell! About the size of a wild boar. Oh, right. Okay. And what it was humanoid, or was it an animal of some description? Then, and, and you saw it, and then it, it, it disappeared. So it was there one minute, and then it just went, and disappeared, or it. Slid off. You see, I don't know the story. We're yeah. we're, we're speculating here. This yeah, is yeah, this yeah, is, of course. Yeah, uh, I. You're going to have to explain a lot more. Matt, uh, you took a photo of a UFO, bright light thing over a field. Some, some say it was, was light reflected in a window. window. No, no, it wasn't because I, I actually would never take a photo like that where I'd actually bothered to take the effort to make to take a photo through a window because. You do get reflections, and I know that because I'm a camera fanatic. Oops, a daisy, sorry. Um, I'm a bit of a camera fanatic, and um, I know that I have, unfortunately, had to you know, make many photos through my microlight window um, because it's bloody cold if you have the uh, the door off um, with the wind. Um, so I, 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 you know, for ease of use, I've pushed the, the camera up against the glass, but you still get reflections of the camera on the glass. I know all about that. I'm I'm well well conversed with uh, with this sort of stuff. I I know for certain that that in that occasion I hadn't taken it inside the car. I was I'd opened the window and I was taking some photos of the white horse on a nice clear day to be able to go home and say, oh, what does it look like? You know, what's the pixel quality like on this on this camera on a nice clear day? And just to you know just have a look at the photos. Um, and when I got home and, and sort of loaded them into the computer, bang, that's what I saw. In one frame only. Um I could I, I, I even thought to myself, well it could be some sort of digital artifact, but a digital artifact doesn't often look like that, you know. A digital artifact is um usually something that's jagged or, you know, it, it, you, you have a certain character it has a characteristic that I it looked organic. And I must be honest, I don't think that um, in one frame something organic like that should have been there in the sky. And uh, it didn't seem to be part of the camera's mechanism, and, uh, and certainly not a reflection. And if I was holding the camera in the same position, and I took three photos, and one of the photos, which was the one you've seen, 
has that on it. Um, it's peculiar that something was there very fleetingly. Bang, and I caught it. Um, They're saying, OK, we'll have a look at this one. Um, and they're still asking whether... I think there's some confusion whether you are a a believer of... Yes, I am. Strange things. I am a believer. I mean, oh, God, if I could, if I could just convince people of, of all the things I've seen over the years... Um, Right, we're having a look into some photograph here, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, this, this so does look quite so a good one. Why is it so slow? Must be. It's a big file. Oh, right. We're, we're going to really home in on this picture now from uh, Andrew Perker. Okay. So it's, It looks like a UFO in, in the clouds. Yeah. Um, we'll get to it in a second. It's coming. Oh, I can see. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. So it's a definite line, isn't it? I mean, yeah, that, that would be more more convincing than, than the previous picture which i think mm. hedgedred said looked yeah. more like a bird yeah well uh the thing about clouds is i suppose that you should never underestimate the fact that um there's a lot of electrical activity going on in clouds and i i know that um if you if you basically have two sets of clouds rushing at each other you know and when when they sort of make contact you're going to have uh, you're going to have a difference in the in the air direction that will cause thunders. You know, so it's it's like electrical storms, um, potential for light phenomena, ball lightning, um, lightning strikes. Potentially, I'm I'm not saying absolutely, but uh, you know, like that's a, that's a potential here. Yeah. I think you're like me, aren't you? you, you you, you try and find the right answers before you sort of... Yeah, you can't jump off the deep end, yeah. can you? I mean, at the end of the day, it's... Uh, it, you, you have to look for a rational explanation. Yeah, yeah, I think that's a fair comment. Yeah, I mean... Because if, you, if you're going... Some of the things I've seen, <laughs> they're, they're, they're not... They're not rational, though. I mean, I've seen, I've seen a ball of light go, up, go across a field, uh, being chased by a helicopter, military helicopter, and then go zoop! up into a UFO, which was a, and I will use the vernacular, motherfucking big UFO, which was visually, not photographically, but visually, was a perfect um, yeah. perfect saucer shape. And it was hovering over the town of Pusey, and then it went instantaneously up into the cloud. So basically, this little ball of light that had been going across the, um, underneath the white horse, uh, had gone across the Alton Barnes area, had gone out, had been witnessed by myself and people on the hill. There were, there were a large amount of people saw this uh, from different angles. I had video footage of it, of part of it, and uh, certainly had video footage of the helicopter, um, you know, sort of trying to come down and and uh, and stop us using our searchlight that we were we were we had with us. Um, but yes, this this little light went off and uh, disappeared into a bloody UFO, and and it went zoop. <laughs> up into the sky and it's like amazing I mean what's all that about what is all that about um, Andrew Perk is saying the fact of the matter is if you provide the proof the public will still doubt it simply because they don't understand what they are seeing I don't think people um, really do understand what they're seeing because no. because it's it's not a it's not a, a sort of a physical thing. I'm, I'm more sort of like uh, Andy Collins in, in many respects. I think that what we're seeing is is a representation of something else. And I don't know uh, whether or not these these aliens are energy forms or whether they're... Uh, the, these, these alien craft are en energy forms, you know. Um, I think that they are... I think that they they they're more there's more going on. Um, I think I, it's definitely not um, going to be a mechanical craft that's on the Salisbury Plain. Put it like that. I mean, I can put that out of, out of the picture. I mean, whatever the military were doing that night, um, if they're playing around with things that can move at that speed, you know, then and be that size above a village you know it's just it's just it, where would they build such a thing how could you build something the size of a village of Pusey and fly it through the sky and then make it just go whoop straight into the you know how could it do that it can't do that where would you hide it where does it get kept does it you know <laughs> 
the, the, these things don't make sense and that's the whole point about these these subjects is a lot of it doesn't make sense and we're not saying it's not real but we're saying it doesn't make sense so what we have to uh, what we have to acknowledge here is that there is a a layer of what we experience that is beyond rational perception um i always find it interesting that whenever people speak or use the the reference ufo it's it's always used in a um out of this world context yes. when ufo means unidentified flying object but pe does. people sort of naturally assume that it's something of supernatural source you know yes um and also i think um just because we reach adulthood people assume that they no longer carry the childish imagination yeah which is um like simulacra that the need to identify things by making images out of yes yeah, do you know what I mean? But like, that's what we're very good at, you know. <coughs> and uh, I was watching a, a set of YouTube videos uh, last night by, is it um, Dar Daniel Tar Tarrant or something? I showed you, didn't I? The guy, the Incredible Brain guy. Oh yeah, yeah. Blew me away. Totally blew me away. This 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 guy, because um, the way our brains work is we try to um, we try to sort of analyze uh, the images that we get and uh, pattern match them to other things and that's what our brains are good at and if you if you rewire if, if the brain is damaged or um, has has some wrong connections instead of interpreting what you're seeing as um, I, I look at a, a, a the microphone um, and then suddenly it becomes it, it becomes a square you know, in my head, my brain goes, no, it's a square, it's a square, and it's hot, it's hot, it's hot. So every time I look at the microphone, it goes, it's square and it's hot. But, you know, everyone else sees a microphone. In the, in the mind of a person like that, that has a, a, a sort of brain... Suggestive. Brain damage, oh, right. yes, brain damage. They've actually found um, incredible, uh, incredible things going on because this person can perform mathematical feats and c uh, can perform uh, calculations to thousand, you know, he, he, he can, he can um, do things to decimal places beyond computers instantaneously by seeing numbers as shapes, feelings and colours. So he's, he's, uh, it's called synesthesia, that's right, synesthesia it's called. And um, basically, translating things into objects and shapes, this person has been able to capture the, uh, the power of language. He can, he can absorb languages. He can learn a language in a week, he said. I said he said he did, did it before. And the TV crew said, right, we're going to set him a challenge. We took him to Iceland. And Iceland is, uh, it's got the hardest language in, uh, on the planet. And this guy learned it in a week and went on television and was chatting with people on television. And the, and the woman was like, oh, my God, that's just so amazing. Now, that's somebody who's got a damaged um, perception, perception unit in his brain. So what he sees gets turned into something else, you see. So he sees with his eyes, you know, the snuff box. The snuff box he sees, but his brain is kind of telling him, no, it's not really that, it's something else, you know. And numbers, numbers for him, right, so if he had a number six, it would be uh, a pit, he said. And I thought that was quite interesting. He, he described that six, six was like a vacuum. Um, you know, this, this, the fascination with the number six. He, he went through all the numbers, and when he got to six, he went, it's like a pit, it's like a vacuum. There's a, and I was like, ooh, that's spooky. We'll have to spooky. find the link and, and post it shortly or something yeah. so they know We'll have to find the about. link. Um, yeah. um, just Do you want to find to, it? Just a second. Um, I just want to catch these questions before they go off the screen. Um, Dion says, was this your UFO, Matt? And he's pointing to the... Yes, uh, that's the one. Do you want to try and... Um, if you go on that, no, well, you, yeah, do it your way, do it your way. Yeah, I'll just well, talk. Well, no, it's, it's it, I can't. You can't do it. That. So what are you wanting me to do? Uh, just That's all right, like that, isn't it? No, you can't see it. Hang on. Hang on, then. Control plus. Uh, oh, right, uh, yeah. Uh, oh, sorry, sorry. Right, if we do that, then we get something like this. Mm. This is the UFO thing that was captured on, on one frame of my camera. 
And I don't know, it just doesn't look like a digital artifact to me. And there's something suggestive almost of... of but again, you see, this is perception. I'm, I'm reading into it more than is there. It's like with Mr. Perker. It's his photo, you know. What you've actually got is you've got... If you break it down to brass tacks, is, is the two lights on the left seem connected, and then there's three lights on the right are disconnected, and that's all that's there. And there's a few sh shady bits. Um, so really what you've got is, a cup, is maybe a ball light phenomena or a flecker of flash of lightning or something but if you stand back and you use your human brain power and you say well oh what does it feel like to me what does it feel like that feels like a triangular shape it's, it, it's it, to me there's it suggests there's a triangle there I, I don't know if you can see it. I can kind of see it. But well, you're going to think that because you've got yeah. three going down to two, which forms, it's going in the direction of the triangle. Yeah. But in my mind, I'm thinking if that was a UFO, um, then uh, it's either three-dimensional, yeah. i.e. it's got the same lights all the way around, or it's flying on its side. Well, or yes, it must be sort of banking. Th there's no way Banking that, away. Yeah, unless... Because if that wasn't on its side, there's no way that you would see that. Yeah, and it must be quite a big size as well to be seen at that uh, angle and that, that distance. Because, I mean, you... But, but where is it, you see? Was it was it one inch away from the camera? <laughs> or was it... No, I You know, don't was it so. nearly at the cloud level, you know, in the distance? That's the thing you can't tell with these sorts of things. Um, sometimes you can with certain depth uh, technologies and, and things... Uh, and, analysis but um in this case i think because it's digital you have to take it as it is and, and just say well it's an unknown it's not the most impressive photo in the world but i'm just saying you know it's just something i took well funny as it is my skeptical mind when i actually first read the question from dion if, i i assumed that not, he meant not brilliant when, photo, he, when he said really. is this your ufo matt i thought he meant have you hoaxed this no uh, no 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 do you want to get the chat channel back well he he, he then posted a, another video link yeah um which is hang on it's just disappeared there we go just oops have a look at that. what we got what oh we got? that's the site um hang on i don't think uh, uh, oh god uh, uh. oh here we go right what are they saying here um your conscious mind controls what you see proven in many experiments by p staker that's um that's uh reverend p staker Yes. Yeah. Ah, great. Hello, peace taker. God, look what oh. I've done to myself, mate. You know, this is like this is what how I do a show. Yeah, it's, it is stressy. I could see, you know, Reverend P.I. Staker was was feeling the stress of it, and strangely enough, tonight I felt the stress of it. And earlier on in the day, I didn't think I would, but um, you know, right at the end, it got me. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah, 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 I could do that, I could do that. And it's like, Ugh. right, so never mind, there we are. But uh, who wants to Skype in? We, we, we've we we've got a TV channel that's capable of taking a Skype call. Let's get some Skype in because we're, we're sort of, um, we're hogging it here, aren't we, with our sort of... Unix is calling it David Icke's Moonship. Moonship, yeah. Sounds good. It's in the Tibetan Book of the Dead. It is, is it? Mm. Tibetan Book of the Dead. I haven't actually read that. I know you see it in movies and people say, like, you know, blah, 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 Tibetan Book of the Dead. Uh, I've never read it. I, I, I kind of went through the Necronomicon, which was uh, H.P. Lovecraft. It's a, f it's a fake. It's not real. Um, but I, I read the Cthulhu Mythos and stuff. But I've never read the Tibetan Book of the Dead. Maybe I should. Maybe there'll be some wisdom in there. But uh Dion saying, Matt, you're fine. You are great, you are open and honest, so crack on. Oh, crack on, eh? Okay. I, well, I'm, I, not, uh, I'm not on crack, but uh, no, I will was, crack on. I ad libbed, yeah. <laughs> ad -libbed <laughs> on the end of it, sorry. Yes. <laughs> oh, moonship was a joke, sorry. <laughs> oh. Sorry, that's me, my my naivety there. Sorry about that. Oh, okay. Right then, so so is there? A, have a look at the little Skypey thing and see if there's anybody down there. That, no, that, that, I, I usually it, see it if, yeah. if one comes in. Yeah, but if it, it, but does it does it tell you anything up there? Anybody wants to Skype? Hmm. Dorothy's not on. No, no. No, Dorothy. No, nah. no. There, there's a, there's nobody wanted to Skype in. 
Ah, oh, God. They've got the same stage fright as I have. There we go. But at the end of the day, you know, stuff like this, when I got arrested, you know, blah, blah, blah. I, I, what I'll do, because it's, it's going to be boring me actually going through and taking the piss out of these. I mean, I'd love to take take the piss out of Michael Glickman and, you know, but how well, much, do, how much do, cruel... Do you need your scrapbook to do that? How much cruelty can you take in one fucking evening? Right, okay, here's a demonstration circle we did for uh, uh, the BBC. Da, da, da. And this is a letter of thank you. You see, the BBC are nice. They send you letters of thank you. Thank you for actually taking part. You see, it's, it, it substitutes for something called uh, money, you know, or payment. Not that I was asking for any, but it substitutes for that, you see. So, uh, you know, whereas some circle makers need to actually have payment to do something, some of us work for something called thank you. Thanks. So, uh, anyway, the BBC said, would you do a demonstration circle? And I'm wondering if I can... Oh, hang on, I'll just have to play with the settings a minute to get this working for you. Logitech webcam. Can I do the focus? Where's the focus? Simon says, Matt, the show needs to be more interesting than just you taking the piss out of people. Oh, you, but, you, but it did. But it, it's <laughs> good, good for a five-minute laugh. There you go. Right. <laughs> There we are, look, sort of a field with, um, you can see people standing, car sizes, and there's the BBC crop circle. I slightly cocked up and placed it a little bit too far off to the edge, as you can see. Um, but, I mean, they didn't give us a bloody big field, you know, so I, I kind of cocked it up and went a little bit over the edge on, on the side. But uh, I replicated what this gentleman was uh, was was asking for, you know, in terms of... Uh, being created. So somebody said to me on uh, on YouTube the other day, they said, oh, we haven't seen any photos of it from the air. Well, there's the photos from the air, because I actually looked through my archives of stuff, and that's the helicopter that went up and flew over it. And it's not brilliant, but I, I, I can put them up online. And yes, there's the aerial photos of it. So, you know, that was done at night, complete darkness, and it was duplicating a design that w wasn't even of our construction. It was something that somebody had sent into the BBC, Wiltshire, as part of a competition, and they had to uh, pick the best design they liked, and uh, we picked it, and then I had to make it. You know, I had to go out and make that, and I did. And I think it's pretty bloody accurate to the design that I had. I did something that was somebody else's work, you know, and I managed to replicate that, you know, so it's like, uh, um, can be done. It can be done. So people need to realise that, you know, these these things are achievable. You just have to put the right amount of effort into them. And, uh, yeah, here we are, Mr. Glickman. The Glickman files. Here he is. Mr. Glickman. Circle fans galaxies apart. Researcher who says crops... Oops, sorry, burping again. Crop circles are the work of aliens. Faces challenges by hoaxers. Oh, yes. Oh, there we are. You see galaxies. Now, who could make a circle like that? Who could possibly do that? Now, what I'm interested in as well is, what does he credit it as? There we are. Let's do the focus. Focus, focus, focus. Professor. See? Professor Michael Glickman. See that? And as we all now know, Mr. Glickman, who was never a professor simply gave a few lectures at a university in Southern California. And, of course, in the United States, polite little students like to call their lecturers, they like to call their lecturers professor, because it's polite. You, you don't, you, it's like sir, sir, yes? You know, so you call your teacher a professor, yes? So when he gave some teaching lessons, he was called a professor. But he wasn't given the title by the university of professor. He was never a professor. When we exposed this, the motherfucker, excuse my language, which I, I yeah, 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 well, we won't go into that, but, um, yeah, he's just stopped using the title. He's, still, he's now Mr. Mr. Glickman, not Mike, uh, not Professor Glickman. So, what's all that about? What's all that about? Got a couple of questions. Professor Glickman, Professor John Raymond Robert Searle. Searle effect generator. <laughs> professor. Where do you get your professorship from, Dr. Searle? Professor John Sherwood. Where do you get your 
doctorate from Dr. John Sherwood. Ooh, Dr. Levengood. Dr. Levengood. Where do you get your doctorate from, Dr. Levengood? I want to, I, I'm actually, I want to start a campaign. I want to start a campaign for people to say, I want to see your credentials. <laughs> you know, it's like, I, you know, I want to see your credentials. I want people that, that serve me to actually have identifiable credentials on them. Yeah. That, 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 I, that you know, because I, I, I just, it's like, you, how do you know that somebody is really who they say they are? I mean, yeah. It's it's just disgusting, absolutely disgusting. But anyway, we digress. <coughs> Can we you know my feelings question? on that one. From Robert, uh, uh, yes. sorry, Roger, CCC, Matt. Certainly, Roger. <coughs> You've seen me in a... Roger, Roger, <laughs> sorry, mate. Yes, yes. Now, this is where I start to feel a bit embarrassed because um, Roger, is, is, uh, he said that he's very... Um, he follows me. <laughs> you think, No, 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 he follows me online and he thinks that, you know, what I'm doing is very good. And seeing me drunk like this is is just... <laughs> You've gone down in his I might have gone down in your estimation now. <laughs> you might have that with a few Shit. people, actually, Matt, if you watch this back on the... Uh, certainly the first 10 minutes. <laughs> well, I, the thing is, right, I mean, we had a good idea. It was a good idea, but then the technical yeah. <laughs> challenges of, of actually making it work... Didn't. <laughs> it didn't quite do what it, I told it to do. Yes, right. Well, anyway, so. back to Roger CCC. Yeah. Matt, about an hour ago, you mm. were asked about the Milk Hill script. Right. Any ideas? Oh. I don't think we Milk covered Hill that script. question. Milk Hill script. Do you know anything about it? I know. Well, script is... Are you talking about the um, the square things? Because, I mean, that's... When you talk script, there's only been a few scripts that have been out there. And there was there was one which was uh, meh. let me just uh, what's the best way to do this? I'll point my other camera at me drawing board, and we'll try and do it this way so I can show you what I think we're talking about. We could probably find it, but I don't know what it's called unless somebody can bring a link up in channel. And um, they're saying the one done over three nights. Is that have I got that right? The Milk Hill script. Oh no, wrong camera. Oh god, my my. Let me drop this on the floor. Everything's going wrong now. Uh, yes. Okay. So the one that that, that was done over three nights. Camera, camera, camera. Wee. The one that appeared over three nights. That's what, what script. Um. You oh, I know what he means. I know what you mean. You mean the, the the thing that was like the swallows at the top with an alien head, and then it had lots of dangling. Hang on, let me change he the, cam the camera. He means the A line script. The a alien, he probably means then. Oh. Yeah, alien script. Alien, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, right, sorry about that. <laughs> A-line, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, uh, yeah. Okay, um, the, the alien script, what do I think about it? Um, it's hard for me to think about it because I know about it. So it's hard for me to think and fantasise things about it when I know things about it. Um, if you know what I mean, um, if I was to fantasize about things that I I uh, I didn't know, then I could fantasize all sorts of things about that. But but it would be very hard for me to um, to do that, knowing what I know. <laughs> you know, I wouldn't I wouldn't be I wouldn't be prepared to. I would only be prepared to fantasize about things I don't know. Well, in what, what in this can you in say this in it? this in this case, what I would say is that. Um, uh, I might be I might be stepping slightly on somebody some aliens' toes by revealing this because the aliens that uh, that the aliens that channel through me yes let's put it like this yes so I don't get into tr too much trouble the aliens that channel through me um, may may have uh, decided to just go back and and have a little freak out you know the aliens decided that uh, their original work wasn't good enough and decided to just have a, a good old freak out and uh, and and start creating random script which is to them random script you know it, it, it had no meaning or purpose whatsoever it meant nothing to them it had no uh, no no sentences no characters it was it was just a random play so they were playing around doing different design ideas and just doing little swirls little 
giblets, little bits and blops and tops and bottoms and serifs and swirls and all that sort of stuff, yeah? And it's just like an experiment in having some fun. And, of course, the the... <laughs> What makes it so uh, interesting is that it, it is so bloody big. You know, the, 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 that little little experiment wasn't a little experiment. It was like a bloody big experiment. It's like, well, if you're going to do something, you know, do it big. And I think um, if anything is ever found out about that being deciphered, <laughs> trust me. Right, I'm doing some stuff now. I want to get I want to get my reality gland back online. <laughs> Trust me, if anybody finds a cure for cancer or something like that from that alien script, right, I tell you, I won't just he eat my hat. I will, I will, I will eat my, I will, I, what will I eat? I'll, I'll, eat, I'll eat half my bed, okay? I'll eat half of my bed if that is uh, <laughs> found to be uh, the case. But who knows? Who knows? Um... These things, these things do happen, um, but yeah, these things do happen. I, I just don't, I don't think that um, there's, there's, there's much really going on there in the script. But some people might read into it, you know. Some people might find something, um, but yeah, you know, uh, there's a lot, there's a lot of. Um, I think uh, Mr. Perker knows knows all too well uh, what was going on last season because he became embroiled in, in a lot of it. And, uh, yeah, I mean, there are, there are the people out there in the, in the night. If you want to go out into the areas that we, we're talking about and actually look around, you might do what Mr. Perker did and actually bump into some of the people who were making the circles, which, <laughs> which is kind of funny. You know, he bumped into people making a crop circle. And and then they said, "Well, we're going to come back and finish it off," and uh, they were right. It got finished off. <laughs> so, you know, the, these these aliens posing as humans with arms and legs and uh, you know boots on their feet. Um, yes, they they can shape shift to look like human beings and uh, and talk like human beings. But of course, these aliens that are out there at night doing these crop circles um, told Mister Perker that they'd be back, and by Christ, they were. So yes, any questions? Uh, I don't know if that answers the the thing. I I th I, I, I definitely say it was man made, <laughs> but I but I I wouldn't have a clue. I wouldn't have a clue, officer. Not a clue. I wouldn't have a I'd never in a million years have a clue who would make that. <laughs> no. I got one for you, Matt. How many circles have you made? Um, in your career, I can't remember if I've counted them now, but I I think it it depends. You know, the, the, you could you could go by the old system, the uh, the nineteen eighty system of saying um, how many circles are in a circle, yes, and that's how many crop circles appear in a season. So if if a crop circle has five circles in it, then five circles appeared, and you can add that. You can you can use that st statistical system, which is a bit shite. Um, or you could use the system whereby you say a whole design as being a circle. That's what I would use. That's that statistical system. Um, so you're beating around the bush. Does that mean that you actually haven't made that many? I, can't, I haven't actually counted them properly, but I, I have I have admitted to um, which ones they were. But I don't know. I don't. Know, I, do you know what? I didn't actually count them. What in the twenties, fifties, hundreds? Uh, God, it's going to be about 50 or 100, something like that. That's what I would expect, yeah, but yeah. I wasn't sure if perhaps you were playing up a bit and you'd, you actually I really don't know. that many. I really don't know, but there's a lot of things <clears> I don't know, and I've actually got a pretty bad memory because of uh, lots of uh, abuse over the years. So, uh, yes, a bit of a party animal. So what's the percentage in circles that you've, you've, you've designed and made and circles that you've been a part of or party to? You've been a worker in somebody else's. Uh, yes, yeah. I mean, I've been I've been out with other people doing their work, their designs. You see, and I can't count those as mine. You see, so they don't come into the the numbers that I would I would be prepared to say. So if you add in the circles that I've done with other people to help their um, numbers of circle designs, then you're probably up in the hundred. I would at least least you know definitely up in the hundred. Um, you know, I I would say so. Yeah. 
but I'm not. I'm not exactly sure. I'd I'd, I'd be terribly destroyed if it was uh, a small, much smaller figure. Um, Gino's asking, what do you think of the Julia set formation? Some folk think there are too many circles in the formation to be done in just a few hours. Well, does anybody know how many circles can be made per hour? Has any researcher actually set a set a timer and gone click right circle makers? How many circles can you bang out here in a field, you know, in the night and actually tested them? I bet not. No. Why why wouldn't a test like that take place? Because researchers do not interface with circle makers. You know, it's like um, Ghostbusters, don't cross the beams, you know. If you cross the beams, the universe will explode. Yeah, so researchers do not uh, cooperate with circle makers on the, the whole. Now, we've, we've seen a few researchers over the years um, breaking camps and actually uh, coming across and, and working with us. But it's surprising how much of their research is just then, you know, shoveled under, under, the, under the carpet and ignored after they've done it, you know. So all this research they've done and all the results and the, and look, we've done a circle and there's electromagnetic effects in that circle and there's really strange things going on. Uh, yeah, brilliant. Scientifically done with a team, you know, with their equipment. Great. And then the rest of the crop circle fraternity don't want to, to acknowledge that because it means that people might be doing them after all. But so that we'll hide that. We'll just push that over to one side. Yeah. Yes, Roger. Yeah. <laughs> You know, we'll just we'll just hide this uncomfortable information, as somebody put it. Yes, it's uncomfortable information um, or comfortable. See, do you know what amazes me? It's like people, some people tend to choose um, out of this world ideas to to confronting, breaking things down in the normal world first. Like um, I'm reading that question again by Gino, who's saying yeah. that there are some people out there that think the circles in the formation um, can't be done in a few hours. So, right. does that mean that? The general consensus is that there is only a set number of circles you can do in any amount of minutes or hours. Like, how can somebody assu suddenly assume that it's supernatural because we've established that, oh, you can only do two circles per hour, or... Do you know what I mean? What? Well, no, it depends. Me, no, no, no. I mean, this is the thing. It. You need to... You need to um, yes, I mean, you're, you're saying, what's the standard set? Well, um, people have been filmed like uh, John Lundberg was filmed by the BBC, but of course they, they didn't release the whole footage. They just sort of go, oh, country file, here we are, here's a field, we're at night, here's a couple of photos of us doing a circle, and in the morning this is the finished result. But oomph. Yeah, they don't do a full time lapse showing you the whole thing from start to end. Um, I think there have been one or two bits of footage out there like that. Um, but, you know, again, they're, they're not the whole thing, and I think this is what we need to do. I've been, I've been really trying to... Um, encourage researchers to get the money together yeah so that we can pay a farmer to do a legal formation where we can invite researchers to come and say what they want to do and watch us you know and we will do it and we will we will show them just what we're capable of yes but under controlled conditions and they can they can test then well that's how long it took them to make a circle you know this is how mm -hmm. long it takes to stomp this much meter square of space so if you have one person operating at this speed and this time they can stomp this much distance and then if you've got a circle that has this much uh, flattened crop it's going to take at least and you can you can calculate it you could t you can tell how many people it's going to take yeah but the, the person looking at the design as a mm. believer mm. they can't assume unless they've heard someone admit to making it how yeah. many people were present what do, do people just assume that oh only two people tried to do that in so it, it's not possible like yeah no surely no it's easy I mean, to imagine two people, people aren't going to make milk hill 470 circles are they i mean two people aren't going to make that and i mean I, I i've said in the past that you're talking about 19 19 or so people would be needed to make that and I've said that I don't I have any clue, officer, any clue <laughs> at all, any clue who those people would be. And I wasn't one of them. I was not there. I did not do it. I was not. And I'm not saying that for, you know, artistic effect. I was not there. I was not, you know. So it could it could be the aliens that made the, that Milk Hill formation. And it was certainly astronomically complicated and, and very, you know, very, very hard to do. So hard to design which we'll come to on a future um, uh, Circle Makers TV. We might actually sort of do something on, on that on Circle Makers TV, uh, uh, watch this space. Um, yeah, uh, we, we'll, 
you know, if you can design it on paper, and then can you do it in the field at night? How many people would it take? Yeah. Well, put it like this. If you are a circle maker and you know that you can make a 300 footer in uh, with complicated patterns in say three four hours, yeah, uh, in the hours of darkness, with three people, then multiply that by four. So three four is 12 people. Yeah, then you should be able to create, you know, the the four times size design. So if you've got 12 yeah. people, yeah. So if you've got 12, um, well, if you've got 24 people, then it well, should be. You know, it's it 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 comes out, but it's not it's not um, it's 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 not exponent. It's uh, what do they call it? It's a logarithmic curve, I think it is, because the more people you have and the larger the the design, it still takes longer to to do. You know, but um, I th- I think about nineteen people, I would estimate. Well, le- um, let's say Dion saying more to the point, people can't comprehend um, more than twenty-three people working together. That's the actual yeah. flaw, which I think is probably quite well. The, the point is, accurate. you wouldn't want if you were doing something like that. You would not want to take out beginners, you know. And that's something you can do with most crop circles. You can take out beginners, and uh, you can say, "Well, look, you know, this is what we do, and just don't make these mistakes." And you kind of watch them as they're going, and if they they're going to trample over an area they're not supposed to, you grab them and you go, "Oh, where are you? Where are you? are you seeing? Look, there's a line there," and you start to hone people's senses into the darkness because they're they're looking at in the dark and they're trying to see these points that they're coming up against so as they're stomping they, they've got to remember to, to look for these points and ah, ah that's a point right okay i'll stop and uh and and to ask you know not to just stomp on because once you're in the stomp mode you you're kind of like hypnotized and you keep stomping stomp 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 and then you think oh maybe i should check here if that is a point or not and then you think oh but but i'm in the stomp mode and you stomp it and then everybody goes oh my god you just stomped out a huge mm-hmm. area you weren't supposed to yeah um but the, the 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 point being you wouldn't use an inexperienced crew i'm digressing you see you wouldn't use an exper- uh, inexperienced crew you'd use an experienced crew so um what experienced crew would you use if you were going to make a massive circle like that well um, there isn't a crew that has 19 people in it. So what you would have to do is you'd probably have to get a load of crews together um, that have, you know, made circles and done stuff like that in the past that you could trust, I would say. You'd have to get, you'd have to, you'd have to get lots and lots of good circle-making crews together and um, employ their, their forces, you know, to kind of uh, make up the numbers. And then you could be pretty much guaranteed they've they've made the circles so many times they're not going to make those silly little mistakes that newcomers generally do make and they all make them you know <laughs> uh, it's like circle makers are well aware that newcomers will always make mistakes and you you're prepared for that you know but when you're an experienced circle maker you won't make those mistakes yeah. for sure we got um oh where's it gone Na- Nahalim. how many would be needed for the crabwood alien then uh, again, this is this is just guesswork. Um, guesswork to me. I would imagine that you'd have a team of about at least five to seven people, something like that. Um, you may have less. You know, you never know. You may have less. If if a team has a very efficient system for creation and they don't waste time, they could actually bang out a circle, probably you know, better than 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 myself, perhaps you know. So so you've got some teams are very efficient they're they're very um uh very they, they they don't waste any time and there are some teams which are more like my sort of folk um who like to sort of you know amble into the field quietly you know have a little chat you know maybe have a, a you know a little a little giggle some people are, are like smoking some spliffs and things and they and they 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 do it in their own time yeah now those circles uh <laughs> Those circles obviously don't cover quite as much area, and sometimes you know when people have been doing things like drinking or uh, smoking things or doing things, they make mistakes. But um, I would I would imagine, and this is just imagining, yes, because I don't know what I'm talking about here. Um, I would imagine that if if people were doing 
circles like the Crabwood Alien, um, they might uh, they might be quite serious about their work, and they might be very accomplished in that work, and uh, be able to uh, get in there and go bang 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 very quickly and uh, not mess about. So they're not like the uh, the teams that I work with. So I would I would imagine it's not a Wiltshire. It wouldn't be a Wiltshire team really that was uh, involved in that because we're all. They're all into this. We're all we're all bloody scrumpy drinkers, half of us. Yeah. Hello, hello. Speak I, for I, yourself. Right. Okay. Okay. Actually, I must stop. I'm I'm actually completely misrepresenting now. <laughs> I uh, uh, no no. I must rewind. Right. This is me talking about me and my circle making friends that I've worked with in the past predominantly. I am not talking about the master. Okay, and uh, there's a couple of other circle makers that come to this area um, from other areas, and uh, there's some circle makers who've come to this area and have actually now moved to this area um, who are so serious about the way they do circles that they uh, they couldn't be included into this uh, lackadaisical uh, manner that I talk about. They're actually very, uh, very clued up. But, you know, there are the Wiltshire teams that... Um, a lot of people I I know we we're kind of laid back in the way we work, um, and some of the uh, some of the outsiders that have come in have have taught us a lesson really because they're kind of like slave drivers. They're kind of like, come on, get, get it go in, come on. This is a this is a five hundred footer, and it's got three hundred circles, and we've got like five hundred lines and seven hundred arcs, and it's like. I come out of there, you know. Well, I've 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 helped these teams, and I've come out of there with, and literally that's why my hair's gone blonde. Um, <laughs> Hedgedred was saying, <laughs> there's so many variables in making a circle. Variables. How, oh, yeah, sorry. How would you scientifically control the experiment? I'm thinking of uh, graffiti artists, artists at this point that work, that work in conjunction with each other. Yeah. Have you ever seen them? Well, can graffiti artists make contact with each other and then they work on big designs yeah, and I've, things. Yeah, I've seen them and I think, how yeah. the bloody hell could, could they, yeah. you know, one person's doing some... Alien shaped yeah. uh, image on the wall, and the other one's doing writing in a set space, and it's like, how can they? Uh because they're all good at what they do, you <coughs> see. So if you know somebody who's a very good um, uh, calligraphist, you know, mm. he does the writing well, but you know, but and you know somebody else who's really good at doing the faces, you know, you say, well, we want to do a really big design, but I'm shit at writing, but I'm good at faces, and you're good at writing, yeah. but bad at faces. I'll do the face, you do the writing. Let's make a fucking big one. And that's well, what happens. That's how that's how it goes. You know, you, you can, say you pick and choose the best people that are going to give you the the bits you want. Yeah, but when you're talking up to sort of twenty odd people, I mean, if we're struggling to get your if mics away from me, sorry, yeah. if we're struggling to get guests on the show, then then obviously it's going to be difficult to pe for people to imagine that we can get twenty people out in a field working together. Yeah, it's not it's not actually to be perfectly honest, it's not actually a problem for for us getting guests on the show. Um, I just maybe subconsciously lazily didn't bother this week. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you heard it I, here first, folks. <laughs> you know, this this person sitting next to me will tell you, right? She's she's a testament to just how fucking slack I am. It's it's absolutely amazing. I think is is that I've actually managed to get out and do the things I've done in the past. Um, when I get motivated, I can be like a little, well, this is, you have to be careful. I can be like a little demon, let's or say angel, yeah? I can be like a little demon out there when I get focused on something and I get working. Or um, lazy bugger. Yeah, but in my downtime, I can be a really lazy bugger who forgets things and just doesn't do anything and will stay, <laughs> stay in bed for, you know, three days at a time, you know, and just like, go out for a wee and come back to bed and just get your food and watch movies and stuff like that. that you know i'm not i'm not your conventional nine to five working type person and i i've got a really bad memory and how the hell i've managed to pull off some of the things that we've pulled off in the past or, or work worked with other teams i i don't know how they even managed to you know well, it's swinging roundabouts, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I, I know, I know for a fact that um, other teams that have had me out doing work with them were kind of like shocked that I wasn't up to their standards. <laughs> <laughs> they were like, they were like cracking the whip, and I was like, Jesus, <laughs> fucking hell, they're fit. Fucking hell, they're much fitter than me. Fucking hell, they're like slave drivers. Fucking hell, and I'm like in my brain, I'm like, Jesus, God, do these people give? 
give me a minute. I need a minute in my mind, please. And they were like, nope, do this. And it was like, oh my God. You know, it's like, next bit, this bit, do that, do this, do that. And I'm like, God, these people, they, they really, it's like, it's extremes, you know? It's like... Well, they can't actually see it, but you've got a sign above your door, haven't you, which says, uh, what does it say, Matt? Uh, only slack may pass. Yeah. Yeah. So that's an indication. Yeah, I made a little sign that says, only slack may pass this barrier into my room. So yes. does that mean you'll be too lazy to be making circles this year? I've been lazy since I arrest. <laughs> I've been very lazy since my arrest. It's not, you know, I have. I've stopped so, making circles. Well, let's talk about that then for a minute. Why would you feel, you know, lazy because you're arrested? Why would I feel lazy because I'm arrested? Because, I don't know. I mean, life presents you with certain options. And when I was a circle maker, magical things were happening to me and I was experiencing magical things. And I was, I was so enamoured by all the things I was seeing and seeing the magic how it affected other people knowing that I was part of that I wanted to share that you know it's a, it's an urge and circle making rules uh, you know circle making law as it were um, there's some people that say you shouldn't discuss making circles because it destroys yeah, them you know politics them. it doesn't it you know you don't dis you don't discuss what you do you can't tell people you make them so therefore you know on the one hand you're out doing these amazing things and make people having amazing experiences in them, but you can't talk about them. And the fact you don't talk about them makes them even more exciting and makes the energy more uh, profound, you know? It makes things more profound. And yet, I was a journalist. I, went, I entered this as a journalist, um, researching and trying to, trying to eke, eke little bits of nuggets of gold and take them out and pass them back out to people because I think that people like that. People want to know the truth. They want to know what's going on. Crop Circle's been going on for such a long time and, and people like John Lundberg and, and Doug and Dave and all those were out there talking about it. I came along late in the day and, uh, and, and started making circles but I was very vocal about what I was doing to the point where people actually, you know, realise that I'm a bit of a sucker and uh, I can I can kind of be goaded into into doing certain things that actually are pretty bloody stupid, like making a design, sending it to a researcher before you go and do it, and then expecting them not to call the police. Yeah, that's me. But you, I am you, that twat. You seem to be irritated when when you <laughs> say people should know the truth. And, yes. Uh, yeah. But then why, when the question was asked earlier about you going into the fields in the summer to to interview people, you, you were against that because people can't handle the truth that's a contradiction isn't it say that again people like, can't um, people shouldn't no, go into the you fields. said you said Sorry? that you, you seem to get like angry when when um or not angry but mm. frustrated when when you try and um tell people the truth yeah i that's when you get arrested um but when when you're presented with a uh, an opportunity to go out onto the fields and interview people for the show, which yeah. was asked earlier, you said you wouldn't do it because people can't handle the truth. So, well, people 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 get d depressed sometimes, and I, I mean I've got personal experiences of this. You know, at the same at the same time as wanting to tell people how magical it is and how they can be involved in the magic, and and you know, it's kind of like by telling people that you do these things and explaining how it's done and explaining how easy it is to do, you know, I mean, it, it's easy to make crop circles, but it does require a lot of effort. Yeah. Yes. So, the, the, you know, it's, it's not as hard as people think to make a crop circle. Yes. But it does require an extreme amount of attention to detail and effort. Yes. Okay. And that's what that's what these teams have brought on over the years and to be honest the reason I don't make circles anymore is because I'm not up to the level and standard of their their quality I'm not up to I'm, I can help I can I can I can help I can add a little bit of manpower but I'm not the driving force for this relentless mm. Make a circle, make a circle, make another one, bigger, 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 more complicated, bigger, 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 you know, and all this sort of stuff. And to me, it, 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 my time has gone from being the guy that was making circles hidden in the background, did, did a little bit of stupid thing by, you know, trying to talk to the researchers about it and got myself in trouble and got, mm. got well noticed because of it. 
but now I can perform a better role as a as a, a journalist, you know, than I can as a yeah, circle yeah. maker. Which I, is why mm, you could go out in the fields in the summer and, and interview people for the show. Oh yeah, I could I could do it. I could do it, but it would be I would be aware inside of the pain the painful quality of what you would actually be a- attempting to extract from people in the way of but information. You're doing that by having Circle Makers TV, that's an expose anyway, isn't it? It is, but people can either come to it or they don't have to come to it. The trouble about meeting people in a circle is they're there for a reason. They're there because they want the magic, you know. They might be they might just be tourists who've come and they don't know much about crop circles, they just heard about crop circles or they read some article and they just don't know and they heard there was one there so they go and see it and then they get somebody come up to them and say you know oh yes we know this is man-made what do you think about that and they go oh well it's uh uh." what are they going to say they're going to go well it's man-made is it well they're not going to say well no aliens make it well unless they're charles mallet and uh yeah because i mean he can you know he could have the the video footage and time-lapse photography of a circle being made and he could probably still say it wasn't bloody man-made um he's quite uh, defiant along with um uh blake and uh and and uh god eyeless i mean the worst one she was the worst of all eyeless she actually saw um after the, after john lundberg made the y logo for yell yeah for the bbc country file thing eyeless was determined that that was that was alien made and that john lundberg had just turned up in the morning and uh and, and the BBC and and said yeah yeah we made this and then they made a whole program around the fact that it was you know th- th- they were lying they were just claiming it claiming it they hadn't really made it yeah and been out there with the cameras all night long doing it no 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 it really was made by aliens and John Lundberg and all those are government agents and they just uh, mm-hmm. you know these people's that's stretching it to yeah. the limit and some people stretch it to the limit and beyond so just backing up there for a second are you yeah. saying that you, you got disheartened by circle making not because no. you were arrested but because you were exposed i i, I got um i got a wake-up call really by the uh, being exposed and like i say um i've had experiences of people getting very depressed over the information that crop circles being man-made to the point where they actually tried to commit suicide over it um didn't succeed thankfully um and they were people that i had been friendly with and they didn't know that i was a circle maker and when it came out from the wrong people at the wrong time it didn't come out in the nice way that we wanted it to um they 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 took it the wrong way so i mean you've got to be careful with these things you have to you know if you approach people and you actually ram it down their throats you can get some negative reactions, but if you offer people the information, you say, "Well, look, you—you you know, we're not—we're not the bad guys that you think we are. We're just not what you think we are. <laughs> we're not anything you think we are. You know, you've been told a load of things about us that aren't true. You know, you want to talk to us? Talk to us. Circle Makers TV is all about meeting the meeting the Circle Makers. You know, as they are." Um, warts and all if they're if they're piss takers they're piss takers if they're serious artists they're serious artists if they're interested in magic they're interested in magic and the power of it you know if they're um it, you know there's there's even the uh there's even circle makers out there that are kind of like converted to christianity after becoming circle makers you know it's like well, <laughs> i've only just found out from yourself recently that when the time that i got um kicked out mm. um because i, I was you know, associated with the circle makers. I've only just found out that when that was happening, you had in when when I went to the court with you, I was there at yeah. the, when you got arrested. Yeah, I had no idea that you had only just been exposed as a circle maker. I thought uh-huh. you you'd been in the industry for years. So that f- after me leaving the area for ten years and coming yeah. back, I've just found out from this show that I understand where the people were coming from when they kicked me out. Because right. if you're saying somebody attempted suicide because of their findings, then uh, yeah. emotions were clearly running high. Yeah, and I guess that that is the danger of of. You've you got know. to be very careful with this with, with this stuff. Sometimes, I mean, yeah. you know, you're, you're treading on on people's toes um, because people want to believe, and it never it should never be underestimated. I think that um, people that have a strange sighting 
would want to make more of it and people that have a, a, a brief encounter with something would read into it. They, this is what we were talking about earlier on. It's, it's like the power of the mind to turn something that is one thing into another thing. Yes, so it takes something that's actually quite, um, uh, quite a. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, sorry, how, how do I describe this? Um, taking something that has no life, yes, and giving it life, yes. So you take you take something like a, a field of wheat, which is obviously growing, you know, in in its right, it's in its own right, it is a living thing, but you put a design into it. That, that gives people the idea that something from beyond came here and was trying to contact people. That blows people's minds sideways. They, they go nuts. And, you know, they, they go nuts over it. We know this. this is, but this is an indicator of how religions work. Religions work on the same principle. You take a little bit of something, a story or a, or a nugget of something, and you, you, you sort of throw it at people and say, no, this, is the mag- this is magic. And people do the work in their brain. Their brain tries to kind of like go with it. And then suddenly they go, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they get all excited and, and wowed. You know, is it a placebo effect You're or is it real? You're talking about escapism, aren't you? Because that's, well, is it- in my mind, that's what religion is anyway. It's, it's when... People aren't satisfied with who they are as people, or, or yeah, you know, the people. Some people, people don't need, have an ego. Some people they people use need comforting as well because they can't come to terms with uh, life as it is. You know, pe- or, and people, maybe it isn't the way it is. You know, what what I'm suggesting is people like to channel their ego through another, an external source. Right. Like if I believed in aliens were coming down to make circles, it was because I was too shy in telling everybody how how great I was. What I'm saying is people people use these things as escapism to, to escape from themselves. Yes. They you know, like you were talking earlier about alter egos and egos. People use things like circles and religions because it's it's a way of, of, of being egotistical without saying me, I, my do you know mm. what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they, yeah. I can, I can see that. Mm. Yeah, Maybe. and people get very, you know, as you say, self-righteous. You know, they kind of like the power of Jesus is in me, and the power of the crop circles is there. I mean, but, but it, I think it is there. That's the point. It's like the the weird thing is, yeah. if you could actually, if you could actually brainwash. Right. I mean, this is this is my. You can. Is, right. You can. You can brainwash people. Yeah. But if you could brainwash a person to believe in extraterrestrials and UFOs as an everyday normal fact, mm. yes? I think that that person would actually start factoring those things in. They would start landing in front of them and things would start happening. I do actually believe that. Yeah. I mean, it's it's our doubts which actually stop things happening. Yeah. Because we well, doubt, we hold these experiences back. We doubt that ghosts could be real. So when we think we've seen a ghost... You know, we mm. challenge it. We challenge what we might be seeing and it. What is it? Could it be? Could it be? But what if we didn't doubt? What if we didn't doubt what we saw? And if we saw something, we went, oh, that's a ghost. It's a ghost. All right, ghosts exist then. Oh, right, okay. Then then you'd start seeing them all the time. There's evidence of that. I mean, th- something like the differences between um, Poppy and myself. Yes. She did the Ouija board. I did the Ouija board. I refused to open the door. Yes. She didn't refuse to open the door she, she opened, opened it with door. open arms so yes. she's had a lot of bad experiences from that and i haven't yeah, yeah. so i definitely believe in in what you're trying to illustrate there i think she's also had a lot of good experiences <clears throat> as well but but you have to when you get when you know it's a good one you embrace it and when you know it's a bad one you walk away from it but you, then you live in this this flim flam world that people will come along and psychoanalyze and say oh it's just part of the brain you know it's your brain mm. it's your brain making it up it's like a dream and you know it's all it's all dream world and stuff and as andy Collins was saying last week, I think dreams can sometimes have a way of becoming reality, becoming mm. physical if you're not careful. They can actually manifest and you can end up taking photos of them. You know, they're not just out there. They can become more tangible. But that's important to understand, isn't it? Because how you um, test someone's integrity, like if, if you're a researcher or a believer coming into the, into the area, um, if, if a person doesn't look at logic first... Yes. Um, Skype. Yeah. No, there's not. Nope. If somebody doesn't look at um, 
the obvious questions first and then they go straight to something extreme, then you're always going to write that person off as, oh, I, that person's uh, crazy, mad. And it's p- you're purely judging them on their integrity, aren't you? Yeah, Whereas you, you say, are they intelligent? Are they unintelligent? Do they have brain damage or, uh, you know, are they yeah. on drugs? You know, have they been brainwashed? Have they been brainwashed by somebody or something? Or do they really know what they saw? Um, are they just have they just kind of like enhanced upon it? Are they are they just fantasists, you know, and they've kind of enhanced their experience up to be something that wasn't. But the point being, it's like with um homeopathy and uh and a lot of forms of healing. You know, if you believe that the healing power is there, you do get healed. But if you have doubts about it, it doesn't work. So mm. if you know that somebody's a really good healer and that they can heal you and they spend time healing you, it usually works. But if you doubt it, you're, waste, you're wasting your time going there because, you know, yeah. You're, yeah. You're, you're hoping to be healed on something you're not sure about. But I, I don't doubt, like what Dolly is just saying there, that um, you don't blame anyone who believes that the corrupt circles are created by alien entities. It's like, I personally don't ever... Um, look at an individual and judge them on on how they present themselves. Or, you know, I judge them on. Andrew Collins is a great example. Last week, he is so intelligent and yes. so educated that you can have a proper. I think so. Anyway, mm. you can have a proper debate. Like mm. he he will put all the 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 common answers into one place first, and then start drawing conclusions from. Do you, yeah. do you understand what I'm saying? Like, but being a wonderful speaker and being able to present yourself in a in a very um, believable way makes others people believe, you know. And 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 the kind of yeah. what I've always said is, it's good to read books and it's good to listen to lecturers and, and absorb this information. But you have to have the experiences yourself, otherwise it means ah, fuck all, and you shouldn't this trust is other the people's. Point, though, isn't you it? shouldn't trust other people's words, writings, or feelings, or whatever you have to have it yourself it has to actually connect with you otherwise it's a waste of time but that's a great example because the reason um i, I like someone like uh, andrew collins is because um he he you can tell that he's he's tried to weigh things up for himself yes um that's why you buy into what he's saying because he's done the work he's yes. done all that the the hard stuff the mm. racking the brains combing through stuff yep. and then then you're free then you have that freedom to explore extraterrestrial th- happenings etc but when somebody comes into the equation that hasn't done any research and just pulls out these wild ideas from nowhere you you, you just write them off in your mind you can't learn yeah. anything from that person yeah yeah it's too extreme isn't it yeah. you know it's like and the people yeah. but the, the, on the, mm. the same breath the people that buy into someone like andrew collins so easily or could be brainwashed by him are people that are too do I say lazy? Would that be a bit unfair? To do their own research. To do their own research. People yes. that people that are easily brainwashed are people that are too lazy to educate yeah, themselves. Yeah. And that's not to say that you know because of what you said there I could read two ways and it almost sounds as if like you know oh well if you read Andy Collins and you're really lazy and you know maybe Andy Collins isn't right and they would believe that and that's bad. Well, yeah, but, but technically but that's true, isn't it? Well, technically if Andy wasn't right then that would be the case but what yeah. i'm saying what i think is that andy's on to something you know and it's like yeah yeah, well. yeah, yeah. yeah. so i mean it could be read two ways that statement mm. couldn't it so yeah. I'm, I'm actually of the belief that um these things are happening but to a rational mind that wants to see things in very physical you know nuts and bolts and nothing there's nothing out there apart from what i can see and touch and i don't believe in all these weird things they don't have weird things happen to them People who do believe and open the door and try mm. and experiment with weird things have lots of weird things happen to them. And and those people congregate together and, you know, either become religious about it and start telling other people, well, you know. Yeah. And, Skepticism or, is a good thing because mm. it can control somebody's um, mental health, their sanity. Their, I think you need to be sceptical um, to live. Exactly, definitely. Yeah. I, think, I think we all have a 50-50 going on in our brain, you know, like 50-50, should I do this? 50-50, should I do that? What's yeah, good? What's yeah. bad? Am I yeah. going to you know, put my hand in the fire? Is it going to hurt? You know, your brain is constantly analysing situations for the good and the bad. And um, I just think the paranormal is outside a lot of people's comfort zone. Mm. And uh, they're not prepared. It doesn't. It doesn't play a part in their life. They not. They don't need it. You know. And they don't. They don't understand why other people are experiencing it. But what I'm doing with this TV channel is, I'm just trying to say. Well, look. You know. I'm. 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 
I'm an I'm I class myself as an, a flawed person. Okay, I'm not anything special. Yes, I'm just a geezer who went out there and found out that people were making crop circles, tried it for myself, and by golly, golly found that there were some weird things going on as well. And I'm just trying to relate that to people so that they can have that experience themselves if they want it. Yeah. If they want it. Now, they, they're quite welcome to dismiss it, put it to one side, think that we're working for the government, it's all part of a conspiracy to you know tell us that aliens haven't done it but i mean you know ultimately there's only one way you're ever going to find out and it's what you said is not being a lazy bastard and getting out there and fucking doing some real research (laughs) crop dolly's just made a really good point there she's sort of had uh, a lot of magical experiences in Wiltshire and and in other places but she's saying um they've been magical because she's made them magical by experiencing them and going with it and i think that that's quite a an awesome thing to understand it's like you do create your own reality you create your yes. own fun you know yep. if you, you go to a party it's only great if you make it great yeah. you know if, if you're sat on the sidelines yeah. twiddling your thumbs like i've done a few times in my life then and it's, you shit. Know, yeah. it's a bit shit yeah you've got you've got to you've got to make things happen but i mean i wonder with the paranormal world how far this could go because i mean how just how much could you make happen and i and i i i I'm I'm kind of superstitious in some ways because of the I, I just ha- I just have this feeling that there is a kind of there's a there's a there's a you can't s- ignore it can you I'm I'm superstitious because I think there are kind of rules in place that we we generally don't understand and most people that don't give it a lot of time and attention don't understand there's a lot of rules and things you should and shouldn't do when you when you're involved in these areas and some people are going to go into it and get frightened and leave. And some people are going to go into it and, and are going to absorb it, but become bad and use it for bad. And some people are going to go into it and going to use it for good, you know. And I, I think it would be nice that if people could have experiences of the paranormal, go into it, find how it integrates with their life and have good experiences. And, and how put many good experiences, good experiences have you had by opening that door? Great. Lots of great experiences. Really? Yeah, because they're the most, the most exciting moments of my life. Really, yes. most exciting. Yes. Okay. More than sex. <laughs> yeah, literally. Okay. Yeah. Um, Kerno makes a good one. He says, uh, "Knock and the door shall be opened." Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, I, I even think that uh, sex is a part of the key actually to this because I've had some weird experiences whilst having sex, some sort of Kundalini type. Uh, exp- oh, she doesn't want to go here. Look, I'm, no. I'm eking her out now. No, I'm, no, no, I'm, no, I'm feeling a bit. A bit. No, 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 not, not, not like <laughs> nasty things. Not like you know, sort of. This is, this was like me and a girlfriend, yeah, um, years ago, and you know, we, we, we had some really good sex, and one time we had this experience. I'm just going to tell you, okay, we had this experience. Do that to your old beer. We or no drugs do. involved, okay. <laughs> there was no drugs involved, <laughs> and we had this really weird experience where. Well, when we, uh, let's put it to the climax, yeah, that we both left our bodies and actually like entwined like like serpents, like going round round each other like serpents. So why are you gay then if it was that great? <sighs> I just can't handle women. <laughs> well, I don't blame you for that. I'm a baby. Look, I'm a fucking <laughs> slacker, right? Women require attention. <laughs> women, are, women can be a pain in the arse. <laughs> you you got you to gotta fucking make some effort. Oh, someone just said that that's why it's called Karma Sutra. Tantra, yes. even. Yes, exactly, yeah. Um, you, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I was... Uh, uh, yeah, I am gay. I am gay now. Um, I wasn't always... I wasn't always, I wasn't always gay. And I wasn't even sure whether I was gay when I was young. But I probably was, but I wasn't just... I just didn't understand it because people didn't talk about things back then in the way they do now. So it was just something I just didn't deal with. So th- this is this is a, an amazing breakthrough for the channel here. They're all saying, hey, I thought you were gay. Yeah, I, I am. But I, well. I, I, I've, 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 I've had uh, girlfriends in the past. Yeah. So? Mm. I, I, don't, I don't bring sex into the spiritual equation at all. Yeah. At all. Yeah. Yeah, so... I, I, I think that this is the key, you know, that there are things going on to do with why we are here on this planet and where we're going and our lives beyond. That, that, that there are things that, that you can experience by going out and making a crop circle, maybe by going and meditating. Some people, you know, can do the tantric magic thing like we had. An, it was accidental and we had an experience. 
some people see UFOs and ghosts and, and they get their experiences from that. And some people are very clinical and scientific and they want everything explained in rational terms. And they want, and maybe one day they'll find out why ghosts can be explained with a piece of electronic mm. equipment. But maybe they'll be proving ghosts do exist, but we can prove why they exist with this piece of equipment. They'll be happy then, you see, because they do exist, but this, because of this equipment, you know, and then they'll yeah, be happy. I, I, yeah, that's how I look at it as well. <laughs> then they'll be fucking happy. You know? Um, I I think it's it's I think everyone pretty much agrees you've got to experience this stuff for yourself. Like mm. I can be as skeptical and as defense as defensive as I can be with stuff like this, but I also know that if I go out into the circles and make the circles with the circle makers, weird shit happens. Yeah. I know that, you know that. You you can you can be a disbeliever and yeah. be be so overwhelmed with the yeah, energies of yeah. things that are happening with the believers that you experience what the believers are having and that fucks with people's heads that really fucks pe- with people's heads and that's why I like to get people out making circles you know I'm I'm when I say I'm like a little chaos agent yeah I am a, like a little chaos agent because I want people to go and fucking do this stuff yeah yeah go and do it you know have it have an experience yeah I want you to have an experience you know just do something just don't do nothing don't do nothing. Yeah, don't just sit there and say, "Oh, you're talking shit," or "Yeah, you're totally, yeah. you're totally saying it all, man." Yeah, like go and find out for yourself, isn't it? Have, have an argument. Have, I mean, have a debate. I, I feel very find sorry yourself. that um, a lot of people have, over the years, got involved in this subject and spent a lot of time and money, and might feel aggrieved that um, that, that 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 they kind of didn't get it early enough, or, or were led off by the believers in different directions. You know, down down the buy my book, do this. You know, it's not it's not humans, it's aliens. You know, buy my book and do all that. And they've gone down. They spent loads of money, time, effort. I'm really sorry that those people if they find out that it's humans at the end of the day, are pissed off with that. But I hope that they just move on, yeah? Move on, get over it, yeah? And realise, yes, it was humans, but why was it humans? Ah, because the humans are still involved with all the strange stuff that there's, there's going on. And the humans are no more in control of it than the, the researchers. Yeah, definitely. The re- the, there's no circle maker out there that, that I know is is like into into like magic and and has mm. and can tell you exactly how to summon a, a gold bar well, out of thin they air. They might magically you know. have a, a professorship no. or or something. You know, there, there's nobody out there that has a fucking clue what they're doing. We're all we're all just playing around with yeah. for, for for the for the fun of it. You know, we're all we're all just hoping things happen for people and and that they have great experiences. There's a recurring uh, question in this forum. Uh, yeah, which sorry. I, I, no, I think doesn't get answered or I'm go just on. calling from past that I've yes, read. Yes, go on. People say, like, what is the motivation be- behind Circle Makers coming out, mm-hmm. Circle Makers TV broadcasting, truths about it all? Yes. And it's, it's like, um, at the end of the day, it, it's, it's about... Oh. If you look at science... Getting sober now by the end of the show. If you look at science, science says the human being only uses 3% of their brain. Now, yeah. that's meant to be a fact throughout, you know, yes. the human race. Yeah. So, if even... It doesn't matter how sceptical or pro-weird stuff that you are, if you go on the back of that, if we're only in touch with 3% of our brains and we've built society and beautiful artwork, like formations and stuff, yeah. what... I mean, three percent is like that, yeah. Compared to a hundred percent, what exactly. could you experience if you if you tuned in to the human mind? You know, could you get telepathy? Could you get yep. time travel? Yeah, you know, absolutely. You, you can be as imaginative I, I, as you want. I, I got to be honest, people. If if you want to think that I'm I'm the craziest fucker on the planet, right? I will. I'll. I'm going to tell you that hand on heart, I absolutely believe that we as human beings have paranormal powers in us. Yeah. That we can do things that would defy scientific explanation at this point. We can do things um, with, with the power of our mind if you train yourself or sometimes by accident. I get a feeling, right, this is my own personal feeling, that we we've been limited like some like a car that's had a limiter put on it because i think this is my own personal belief i've just, just from the years of research i've done and people i've met and things i've experienced i think that we only get to see a small part of what's going on because mm. we couldn't take Definitely. the bigger picture I agree. 
Yeah, yeah. we yeah. couldn't take the bigger picture. And if everyone was turned on and and doing things, there'd be a lot of psychic warfare going on. You know, there would be people's thoughts would be affecting other people in in negative ways. Everyone agrees with all this. You yeah, know? I think this strikes a chord with everybody. Yeah. So I I don't know somewhere along the line whether consciously as a species we've you know it's probably sub- power. subconsciously as a species we've agreed to limit ourselves in some way but i think i got i'm not sure if some of this ascension idea that people are on about is about you know come on let's take the limiters off let's see where this goes you know and i think that things could get quite interesting yeah, very interesting if 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 we do decide as a species to kind of you know, yeah, but evolution is going in the forward. Blanks. It's not going backwards, is it? Oh yeah. I, I don't think we're going backwards. Like we we oh, used I to think use one hundred percent. Now we're only using three percent. No, I think I in think the we've past been wiped out. Human beings <clears throat> used to used to do things and connect with the uh, the subtle energies, and experience the the weird dimensions beyond mm. a lot more than we do today. What what's happened is we've we've had a, re- uh, a, a sort of a scientific revolution that chooses to rationalize everything rather than intuit everything yeah i agree and, with that and and obviously you know you can see the benefits of that that's a natural progression but also as much as we've gone forward in one part of our brain the other part of the brain is ve- i think is is wanting the other part of our brain is is needing it's like it's becoming hungry it's it's like it's it's atrophying and it, and i think that people are kind of desperate for something to uh excite themselves and this is maybe where you know yeah they, they, they're very quick to, to clutch at uh you know stories about the paranormal and things like that you know what when i think personal experiences are what should drive you um interesting stories of other people can sometimes be enough for people i think that it, it, you should always research and be prepared to discount everything you thought that you know you thought was true at the end of it you might you might be you might go into you know a, a, a crop circle group and believe aliens are making crop circles and, and have ufo sightings and things like that and then when you find out it's people you go oh well that must have just been lights then it must have been mm. this and it must have been that and you reduce you reduce everything down to base base levels but, but we, all, we all run on I, I don't think they the the th- that it does really i don't think it does take away those those in those experiences I think you actually, what most people do is they say, well, okay, it's people making them, but I fucking know I had that UFO sighting, and I know I had that synchronicity, and I know I had this, and I, and, you know, and but that's, that's why that people... pulls you either way, doesn't it? That's why people cannot accept that it's people, because if it's people, then why did they have those strange experiences? It must have been in their heads. It's that, ex- yeah. it's that exposure again people are afraid of, isn't it? Yeah, that's the trouble, you see. I mean, if people are involved, then it can't be paranormal. Yeah, but but the whole thing is people are paranormal. <laughs> That's um, why things happen to us. We are as much a part of the paranormal as the paranormal. If without us, there wouldn't be anybody to talk about the paranormal. You know, human beings are the paranormal. Yeah, what does the paranormal do? You know, well, the paranormal only does what as much as we let it do, you know, or as much as we let it into our lives. If you turn off to it, it goes away. If you turn on to it, you're in it. <laughs> Do you it's know all what? around I'm you. Confused. You seem to come across to people as completely skeptical because you, you keep getting these people. You've got GBZ now. He says, yeah. "If Matt believes that, why is he running this program?" There seems to be a general consensus that the fact that you're doing this program be- means that you, you're on the negative fence. Which well, is, that's that's the perception people have. But I mean, how do you get past this point? Yeah, yeah. That's, the, that's what that's, it's about. That's what it's about. Yeah. How do you get past this? You know, it's like, um, you you know, you might, gr- I mean, I, I'm, I'm going to break it down into basic terms here, yeah. Uh, you might grow up believing that Santa Claus is real, yeah. And I bet you when you were a kid, you know, you might have thought, God, it's great if, if he if he come down the chimney tonight. Wouldn't it be great if, he, if, if I actually saw him? It would be great, you know, and it's like, but I can't look because then all my presents will go. And you're like, you're living the dream. You're living it. Yeah, you're actually living that dream. And a big part of you is going, nah, 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 nah. And the, but there's a part of you going, ah, but but come on, though. But so come this on, is, this is my fucking presence are riding on I'm this right shit then. here. It's about sanity. It's about my presence are fucking riding on this here. You can't fuck with me because it's like, and it's like, no, no, no. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. Yes, it is. No, it isn't. Your brain's always playing these yes, no games, yeah? So the point is, 
What if you did see Santa Claus come down the chimney? Would anybody believe you? And then you're fucked. <laughs> you no, know, I, I actually think you're onto something because because you'd spend the rest of your life trying to convince people that Santa Claus was real, and that's what and happens. everyone else would go, yeah, that's what fucked. Happens in the, yeah, in the UFO industry. Isn't so it? there's so many people out there are marginalised to the sidelines and made to be the crazies because they believe in you know UFOs and aliens and and believe in ghosts and things like mm. that. But so many people have seen them, and 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 you know, I mean, how many people on this planet? Are religious. I mean, this this is religious planet. People are religious, and they don't even you know, know that they are. We we believe that, oh, the, you know, we believe that living on planet Earth, that science is God, and and the West will win the day, and all this sort of stuff, because we've got nuclear weapons, and we've got the big stuff, and we know what we're doing, and we've got science and all that sort of stuff. But how many people on this planet are religious? I think most of the people on this planet are actually religious. Yeah. And the scientists are actually the minority. But we are living in a society of scientists. So we don't see the world like that. We, th- we see the world as like, oh, the world's like us. But no, the world is not like us. I think the, biggest, the bigger part of the world is actually quite religious and superstitious. And if they are, then they're having these things happen to them. They're having the experiences. They're relating to the reality of this truth of paranormality. And you know all 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 the West can do is is come along and break it down. Well, me as a circle maker coming on here and telling you that we make circles is breaking it down. I'm like a scientist. I'm telling you you know how it's done. But ultimately, what I'm also telling you is, if you go out there and make a crop circle that other people don't know is made by people, they'll freak out and UFOs will land. <laughs> you know, and, and and strange things will happen. You know, it's like that's what it's about. But how do you get that across? It's like if you if you lie to people, they'll have paranormal experiences. Mm. Then they won't be able to take those paranormal experiences back because they'll say they were so fucking weird, those paranormal experiences that I had. How can you have been involved? A human being can't do that. That's the problem. That's that's what all this Circle Makers TV is about. It's about finding out that people are involved. And what we need to do is learn a lot more about ourselves yeah, yeah, and what's yeah, out yeah, there. Yeah, I agree. You know? Don't be offended by Circle Making. Well, uh, someone... Hate me if you must. I know that some people must. And I'm fully prepared and accepted for that. But don't decide to pull the trigger on putting a bullet through my brain until you've tried making a crop circle. <laughs> that's what I'd say. You know, hate me as much as you like, but don't kill me, yeah, until you've actually, you know, if you're going to put your mu- your cards on the fucking line, yeah, go out and make a crop circle, yeah? Mm. You know, if you really believe in this stuff, yeah, go out and try it. Try it, you know? That's the bottom line. It's like all these people that, that stand in judgment, we all do it, I do it with people as well. Yeah. You know, all these people that stand in judgment, these, these people are kind of hypocrites because they don't go and experience it for himself when that's when when you get your extremists yeah. who who own argue one point i say if you're a fair person who has an open mind you will look at both sides yeah you will listen to a negative person you will listen to a positive person and yeah. draw from your own conclusions yeah i mean they're talking in channel now <laughs> i know i know the stories about the um the, the shaman and uh yeah, reindeers uh, used to eat the uh, fly agaric mushrooms, the big red capped mushrooms with the white oh. spots on, you know, like the classic yeah. magic mushrooms. Reindeers would eat those and then start going and tripping out, yeah? So the, the people who saw the reindeers tripping out to this sort of stuff thought, oh, you know, fucking hell, these mushrooms, they've got something in them. But when the people would eat them, they'd be sick. Blah. Yeah. Now, don't ask me how this happened. Hmm. <laughs> but what the people worked out is, if you drink the reindeer piss, then the, the reindeer piss has just the high in it, but without making you sick. So what they do is they feed mushrooms to the uh, the reindeer, wait for the reindeer to piss, drink the reindeer piss, and trip their fucking balls off. And that's where the Santa Claus um, stuff comes from, you know, because Whoa. because this this guy. Yeah, he used to go around dr- drunk with his reindeers. Yeah, and he was he was tripping balls. You know, so this this guy was a tripper. You know, Santa Claus was a tripper. But this is so great for me to hear because to me that this totally fits in with what what's being said because yeah. like f- the human has translated that incident 
into a, a mm. fairy tale, into a video, which flying is caused reindeer <laughs> magic mushrooms. Yeah, the reindeer were you flying. Know, reindeer are eating, and they've got all yeah. this magic. Coming yeah, off their magic. Food. It's, it's all like, coming out. It's interpretation. Yeah. And the small people with the magical yeah. gifts, you know, and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah. The tripping balls. So, hmm. Oh, we've got a nice little compliment here from a chap called Simon. Mm -hmm. Shelley, you're a star. Matt, how about having Shelley interview the guests once in a while? If there are any guests More than like welcome. This? Yeah, there you go. See, that's exactly what I wanted. I wanted people to say I'm a shit presenter and uh, I get <laughs> I get totally fucking drunk and take bloody take, take antidepressants just, yeah. and drink you before bloody, uh, just you know, going on, going on the show. That's all. But I, I, I'm not really all the time alcoholic, am I? I mean, no, no, I, no, but I do have been, I do have I do have blowouts though. I do, but when and they're, spe they're spectacular head. blowouts when they happen. Every once in a while, I go. Yeah. That's me. See, that's like me. It's a circle maker, you know. I don't make many, but when I do, they're fucking good. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Dan says we make a good team. Thank you. <laughs> and Colonel says, Matt, you're doing fine. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> I feel a lot better now, actually. I mean, I, I earlier on, I was I was like starting to phase out a bit. I was like. I couldn't remember. I was starting. To, it was getting a bit weird. You were asking me questions, and I was like, I was only hearing the first three words and forgetting what you were saying. I was like, Oh my god! I was, I've overdone it. I shouldn't have done this. I shouldn't have done this. Can I? Can I take a snapshot anyway. of this mm. moment? Yeah. Right. Think about it. You, you've just had all these people are just coming out positive, positive, positive yeah. stuff. There's a massive circle of positivity coming out. And I just Why? go and say something no, no, like no, no, that. No. Why? It's because we we've all <laughs> talked. No, seriously now. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You know. Let's round it off. Yeah, we, it's we've nice. all been um, chatting about ideas. We, we, we've we've looked at the criticism of how the mind works, how yes. how you know outrageous some people can be, how lazy people can be, and we've come together to to come into a uniform agreement because we've communicated on an even level. Yeah. So everybody feels that they've had a perhaps a win and a lose. Like a, yeah. we've had a good negotiation. Everyone feels like they're in a good place yeah yeah and for me if that can flow through into the summer from from circle makers tv i think if people can remember this snapshot of what you know what i'm on about yeah i think it will be a very positive year and I, yeah. I think that's the point of it all it's like once you get over the negatives yeah. get get over yourself and your ob 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 obstructions that you put with with ideas and stuff then once people can start communicating on an even level there's some real good feelings that, that, and, and epiphanies yeah, absolutely. that can occur. That, so, that's what yeah. it's about, yeah. Bring it on. I mean, I, I, <coughs> you get drawn into talking about the the reality of the politics and the negatives, but ultimately, what we're we're not we're not here for the bad times, are we? We're here for the good times. It's just the bad times are what you have to go through to get good times. You know what I mean? It's like that's the trouble. Is you know, it, it, you can't you can't um make an omelet without breaking some eggs i think is another sort of saying perhaps but at the end of the day you can't make crop circles without a bunch of guys making a lot of bloody effort you know it's like you can't you know it, it takes effort it's not it's not going to happen by itself and i think the 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 amount of effort that the circle makers put into making circles is maybe why there is so much paranormal stuff happening with it because it's a very focused art you know, it's very focused in what it is, and the effects it have has are quite profound and unexpected. And I think people have been tapping into this for a long time. Look at this, the, this, the stone circles, the pyramids. Why did people put them in those places? How did they know to put them in those places? Um, they've got significance, you know, the, 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 the mathematical alignments. It seems, to, it seems to give over that these people knew more about maths and uh, and, and cartography and and design and building, then we can understand today that we can fully understand. Now, how did mm. those people know that? But Was it what? because they were all taking a load of drugs and they were just working on intuition and things magically happen when you let go? Things magically happen. So, what I'm saying by this is that if people are prepared to embrace what's out there, yeah. um, then things will happen but you can't you can't try and rationalize it you have to go you have to run with it a little bit you know there's if you if you if you rationalize it too much it will go away hmm. you know? but this illustrates for me dion's point that he made earlier which was um people can't comprehend a group of more than 23 people working together and do you yeah. not think that that you, we could pinpoint the whole 
war against circle makers versus researchers, non-believers yeah. versus believers, yeah. purely based on the fact that yeah. we just can't imagine working, working but because we're, we're too... Egotist we're yeah. too egotistical to um, to get over the, the the negatives with each other. And you'd be surprised. I mean, people working <coughs> in those massive teams, not all of them get on, but they'll still work together because it's for the greater good. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. It's like some of them believe in this, some of them believe in that, some of them are doing it for this reason, that reason. And, you know, they're happy to go off and be told what to do and go off and work in their area of the circle. Right, you guys, you work well together because you're a team. You know, uh, we've got one extra person, we'll put you with this, this team. But you go and do three circles circles this size and you descend them in certain sizes and you know and you can trust them to go off and do it you know um but if you got them together in a pub they might not like each other you know what i mean they might not talk to each other because they're very very different bunches of people yeah but, but you get over yourself isn't it but yeah you know you, you you're not there for the you're not there for whether you like the other circle yeah. makers or not you're there because it's for making circles and you that's can learn what's more from important. Anybody, even yeah. even somebody you hate, you can learn something from them. You know. So everybody has a value. Yeah, and and it's surprising because people say you couldn't get that many circle makers together in one place all working together. Who says they're working together? They're not working yeah. together. Yeah. They're actually working independently out there over in this bit. You tell them what you want them to do, and they go off and do it. They're not actually working under like total and utter disciplined control of one brain. Yeah. The, 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 you couldn't do it because the one brain would have to be thinking for all 24 people simultaneously. What you have is you have trained people that know what they're doing that can go off and do it, yeah? And once you've once you put a little bit of groundwork in and, and laid, laid the foundations, you can actually let these people go with measurements and you say, I need one of these and one of these and one of these. And when you come back a bit later on, that's what they've done. And if they've slightly cocked it up in some way, then you can kind of brush over it a little bit right at the end to make sure it looks right. But that sort of level of trust and excellence only comes when, you know, teams get together that have had a lot of experience. And it doesn't happen very often. And you do know the circles where it has happened mm. because they are the super big and super complicated ones. You know, those are where teams team up. Dion makes another good point there about uh, you don't have trained people, you have people with a leader. So yeah. if if people know what their role is yes. and they know that there is someone who's who's taking control of the situation, yeah. then things usually are well prepared yes, and yeah. successful. Yeah, and if you know that the person knows what they're doing as well, it, it helps. And and uh, in indecision and uh, confusion can actually cause problems. You know, everyone starts going, "Oh shit!" You know, and then they they they're not focused. You know, there has to be a mm. focus when you're making circles. And some of the best circle makers out there, like I say. Um, uh, the circle makers from London, um, you know, they're very, very focused on what they do um, as an art form. And uh, some of the circle makers from uh, Wiltshire, you know, um, uh, they, you know, we, we, we take it on a different different level. You know, there's a different sort of level of size and scale and complexity. But I still think that the work that comes out from uh, some of the London guys and the work that comes out from some of the Wiltshire guys, you know, being very different sometimes, you know, sometimes mirroring the qualities, but not always. I think that there's room for everything out there. There's room for all different types of designs and they don't have to be 700 foot long and, and really complicated and take 19 people and be a real chore to do. But if you think you it's know? the mistakes that have occurred where the trust hasn't been, you know, where people yeah. have, have gone a, a bit A little oops, bit wrong, yeah. A bit om, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. That it's those things that have really kicked off the... Oh God! Yeah, it's what a does real that one. mean? It's, yeah, you know, it really gets that. But that's that's like that's like the writing we were talking about earlier on. If I was to do calligraphy, yes, and I was to put the word um, apple in the field, not that I, I'm not, I'm not a great <laughs> fan of apple, but let's just not start. Likely, no, yeah, no, yeah. it's not likely to happen either. Um, but uh, if we were to put the word apple in a field, now you know what you're meant to get. You know which way the word a is meant to look, and p, and it's meant to be aligned, and the the, mm. the p bits are meant the, the, they're meant to be vertical. And if it was any way wrong even slightly wrong you'd immediately spot it bang you'd go that's not right but when it's a design when it's a picture it's more abstract and it's meant to be symmetrical and you spot something that isn't symmetrical yeah and you go oh wow isn't that interesting you don't go fucking bollocks yeah if it was fonts you'd go bollocks yeah but if it's a design you go oh well, why is that so weird over here yeah oh what does that mean and your brain starts going oh and it tries to analyze it and suddenly starts all this pattern matching process that goes um goes on and that's great because that's the way the brain works. So where, the, where there's a vacuum, the brain tries to fill in the gap. Where there's a pattern, 
the brain tries to pattern match. Yes, so it, it takes something that it, it 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 doesn't understand and it tries to put it into something it does understand and it keeps doing it continuously. Yeah, so the brain works very hard to do that, and what happens in between is I think the synergy, the energy that is created by your brain translating in those ways can sometimes maybe energize the body and can maybe energize paranormal events can can create things that happen you know it could be the mind is is working on a puzzle of thinking about a particular thing and the way the brain thinks has an energy a tune like a noise or a frequency or something that that triggers something else See, maybe I, that I happens. like what you're saying because if for me in my experience of crop circles it, it's forcing me to hone yep. in on the fact that when when people sort of suggest that there's an outs outside source that's channeling yeah. their artwork into the human circle maker like yeah th we're talking about um inspiration aren't we yeah. like there is an an energy there because i can imagine doing my own circle yeah fucking up but mm. i can imagine there and then and i just know that i would having the imagination to sort it out there's a science there to it there's yeah. there's a there's definitely a um yeah, I don't really understand what that is really, whether it is something supernatural or whether it is... Even science can be supernatural, can't it? Like, what is supernatural? Like, th what I'm saying is, um, as powerless as I feel to correct something, because I know I'm not mathematically good with stuff like that, but what I'm saying is, there's, there's something in my subconscious working on its own, regardless yeah. of my own personality, which says, I'll swallow it out, no problem. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, where's I that think things from? are changing. Things are changing on this planet <coughs> at the moment. Um, you know, you're getting dictatorships overthrown. Um, people are saying, like, you know, being controlled and, and dominated. I don't want this. I want freedom. I want freedom for my mind. I want freedom for my for my soul. You know, I want to I want to live the way I want to live, and we want to think in bigger ways. And people are rebelling against these old orders and old systems. And uh, you know, I don't know wh which way that that's going to go, but I think that. Um, you know, people are people are trying to expand who we are, who and what we are as a species. We're trying to look for something that we're going to move into some new thing that we are. We're mm. constantly expanding, and I think we're expanding at a greater rate now than we have done in in previous human history. I think that there's a there's an upturn. It's an acceleration, mm. and that's not to say that we're going to go accelerate pop in this 2012 <laughs> thing. But I think we're at a we're at a key key moment, key point in in history whereby the synergy between technology and spirituality will have to be bridged, yes? Yeah. Something is going to have to give, yeah? We're going to have to understand where spirituality falls into our, our existence, mm. and we're going to have to understand where the paranormal interface is with it, within us, yeah. yeah? And if we find out things along the way, it's going to get very interesting, it's going to get very exciting, and I think that's... That's why I want to, to kind of turn people on to this is because it it's like a little it's a it's a play exercise basically. Crop circles is a play exercise for just opening yourself up yeah, to what yeah. can be there. I'll accept that. You know like Roger's saying there, Shelley inspiration doesn't fully explain the synchronicities though, does it? And I'm mm. like, Well yeah, exactly. That's the point, isn't it? It's like Yeah. Um that that is inspiration, it is this what we're talking about is you know, oh, I know, I've got so much to say, but I just don't know how to say it. Like, um, th we use words uh, like inspiration. Y you're on. saying that you do have a lot to say, but you don't know how to say it. Yeah, I'm saying. Or are I'm you using that as an example? I'm saying. Sorry. No, I'm saying I wish I could explain myself better. Right. Like what well, you I'm do. Well, what I'm saying is, when we're using words, or when I'm using words like inspiration, yeah, um, words within the 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 English dictionary ones we use every day like inspiration is a normal thing it's a human thing it's an emotion but i'm yep. suggesting that why 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 can't inspiration be the out that the outside source you know because that is a phenomenon isn't it the, mm. the fact that inspiration we're we're coming up with ideas and and you know where's that come from if mm. not from our past mm. how, how can you pull something in your in your in your head that you haven't experienced before yeah if it's not being if it's not coming from somewhere do you know what i mean i mean you know i i i, I rip um on whitley striber because he was the toss pot that uh, helped get us arrested um but ultimately i actually have some respect for his work because um i don't know if i've mentioned this before but i mean i'll mention it now 
Whitley Stryber's books uh, started off being, you know, aliens are abducting me and I don't understand what this is and it's bad, you know. But over over the time of, of his books, Whitley Stryber's actually come to a, an understanding from what I read in, in some of his later works where he, the, the revelation of his abduction experiences was that he was, he became an alien and was allowed to go out and abduct people with the aliens. But he was an alien with the aliens abducting humans. And therefore, the question is then asked, are we self-generating the experiences of abductions? Are we actually, as human species, abducting each other with the power of our minds? Yeah, but I'm saying the fact that you can even imagine that and and create that mm. illusion in your own mind, that's coming from somewhere, isn't it? It's an interest, we- It's a very interesting thought, and I think you know it falls very much into line with the, the stuff we were talking about with Andy Collins I'll last week. What, you know, it's it's that you know these previous things like fairies and you know imps and energies. You know, all these like demon figures or figures from the past that people talk about. You know, are actually just things that we create out of our subconscious, and we interface and play with this for stimulation. <laughs> You know, we actually, we are the creators of either good or bad. It's us. It's us at the end of the Mm. day. You know, maybe human beings are more responsible for this than we even realise. People won't accept that they're on their own. They won't accept they're on their own. Which way? um, It's all about you at the end of the day. You you uh, you know, you come up with it, you think it, you believe it. It's about you. But people will have, always have a problem because people are brought into families, into loving relationships. It's never about a single person, is it? Well, like, no, no. I'm not saying that um, anyone should, uh, like, you know, see themselves as... as I, I, don't, I don't quite understand where you're going with that. Sorry, I'm... Um, no, sorry, I, I just commented on the comment you made there, which was... Um, mm. I can't even remember what you said now. People okay. are... Um, <laughs> strange when they're a stranger. We're talking about complex <laughs> stuff, like someone just said in the forum there. Yeah. Um, we're talking in semantics so we can get away with yeah. murder talking in semantics you know pseudoscience is so great we love it but we're, we're getting we're getting quite late now and done. I don't yeah. think we've had anybody wanting to Skype in um, so uh, you know we're probably going to wrap it up in, in, a, in a short while but I think the, ba- the basic thing is uh, yeah we will have somebody for next week's show I will make a bit of effort but um, this is this has had to be a kind of like a lie over show really um, a layover not lie over Oh God! Yeah. If you've got any secret Freudi- watches, Freudian in there. slips, isn't it? Yeah, it's a lieover show, folks. <laughs> Come on over to my place. We're having a lieover. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just come into my house. We'll lie to you all the time. <laughs> you come out, you'll be totally lied. <laughs> well, I'm glad to see we'll you've stuck li- out of it, man. Lie anyway. your ass up. <laughs> you certainly chirped up. I have you? chirped up. Yeah, God. <laughs> I think you're gonna get a bit of stick for that uh, next week. I c- I'm just ho- horrified at what it's gonna look like. <laughs> Because I, I know what I was feeling like earlier on when, when the bloody uh, antidepressants were kicking in and it's like, oh, there, there was a point where I was thinking, oh, Jesus. This is yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you're told, you, you know, you, you've, you've had some of these things in the past and you know that they say they don't, don't drink alcohol I know, them. I know. <laughs> you're not supposed to drink alcohol with them. There's a reason for that. Um, okay, well, I, I, you know. Learn the hard way. Yeah. yeah. I believe I can fly. I believe <laughs> I can take antidepressants and drink on a television show. It's great. I believe I can fly. Yeah, okay. Dion, I did read that comment there early, you've written it twice. Um, but it's mainly down to the master, the leader, the person that designs, and mm. that is the person that holds the answers. I, di- I didn't like that question, that statement, if I'm honest with you, Dion, because it. There was a film I watched. Which, which was it? Where someone says, um, I don't believe in fate because I don't like the idea. Was it The Matrix? I don't like the idea of not being in control of my future. Yeah, well, um, yeah, go on. I no, can I think was of just a saying, like, to, he, to his point. Dion there is quoting a master, a leader, yeah. and a person. I, th- I think he's t- talking about um, making circles. Sure. But um, but I'm, I'm saying that there's... I, I don't take in the... Uh, Hang on, what's he saying now? Why do you create another design that isn't yours? Right. Can I can I answer? I got a yeah, good, yeah, I got yeah, a good yeah. thing, and before I forget it, which I'm likely to do, um, is 
it's not always the um, the person who's leading the team wants to be the same person every time. Um, you'll find in a lot of circle making groups. I mean, it, I, I personally think that it's um, like a, through a trying, trying to not be too egotistical as a circle maker. Circle making people will say to the people who make the circles with them, but come on now, make some designs and I will do yours, yes? That's to the people in their team. And that's that's a common thing, is like, well, you know, you give me a design and we'll go out and do yours, you know? Show me what you want to do. It's not all about me, you know, I'll do yours. Let's go out and do yours, you know? So it's not all about the, the master, but, uh, but you are right that when in a group, when the design is being done, somebody does usually one person at least one person and it usually is one person does have the focus they hold the, the they hold the focus very tight of what they're doing and everyone else just um uh, they're actually more comfortable because they know that somebody knows what they're doing you know somebody knows what they're doing we just do what we're told and as long as we do what we're told it works and you you give over your responsibility to the to the team leader who then tells you what to do and as long as you do as good as you can do and as you're you're as careful as you know you can be it works yeah so but but the team the master shouldn't be revered you know as the master of all things because they make lots of circles because i know that a lot of those um those very good circle makers always do say to people you know it's it's up to you if you want to step up to the plate yeah if you want to step up to the plate and do some stuff Let's see, your, let's see your stuff. Let's do your stuff, yeah? And I know that some teams, uh, what they do is sometimes somebody will say, well, I've got this design, but I'm not confident in actually leading the team to do it. Will you do my design? But you lead them because you understand where we are in the dark, yeah, much better than I do. And that sometimes happens. So but it's I a pecking think, order then. But I think it's very important, and I've always done this on my teams, you know, to say to people, look, if you want to do a design and I will take your instruction, yeah, then you tell me what to do. Has I haven't had many people actually sort of step up to the plate and tell you know do it. But when it happens, I'm more than happy to stand second, second person to the but to the to person that's in. But it's to do with trust. It's to do with the person. To, yeah. If you're the master circle maker, yeah. you, you're 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 being called the master because you you never you know fucked more up. than they do. You've never fucked yeah. up. You, you've made sh you've led the team well. But it's um, like saying that nobody else can drive a car that just because you drive your car and you have done very well for a long time. Somebody else can't drive your car, you know, and it's like you've experienced that because I wouldn't let Shelley drive my car, no fucking way. <laughs> and how many accidents have I had? I don't know, millions. None. Bollocks. I haven't. She's a nutcase driver as well. She I've never had an accident. She was a I've nutter in the day. I you was, was a nutter. I was, but I've not had an accident. She used to scare me. I was like, bloody hell. Probably picked it up some of my bad habits from you. Uh, no. I was going to say, I don't ever remember you being as crazy as you, as you are now. But anyway. No, I was. Um, yeah, right. Uh, oh, what, driving with no brakes, I remember that, yeah. Yeah, oh yeah, Drive, cool? driving yeah. cars with no tax, no insurance, no MOT, and, and driving them like a lunatic. We won't talk about those things, no. Yeah, uh, it's not just crop circles I'm mad for, but uh, yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm a good boy these days, my cars are all legal. <laughs> Fully insured and taxed and MOT'd. It's because I got caught. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. No more, caught for that. no more red diesel. No more red diesel. No, no more red diesel. No, no. Matt, does she know that her car insurance is going up by 100%? <laughs> Fucker. I used to like you, don't anymore. Yeah. That's true, I heard it on the radio today. What? No, because um, apparently it's come out in the courts, so I think I've got this right. Guys get charged more for car insurance because statistically they have more accidents than women. But the, the courts or someone has come out and said that um, that's sexist. Mm. So women's insurance is going to go so my what did i pay 300 quid for mm. fully comp yeah. last last month yeah it'd be probably be what More. 500 quid next year mm. yeah i mean i'm i'm slightly sexist because i think that accidents happen because uh women on the road like driving slow going up to roundabouts yeah and they're just like well it's not just women but like you know people who can't fucking drive yeah it's the people who can't drive on the roads cause the accidents to the people that can drive because i come up to a roundabout and i can see seven miles in that direction to the right seven miles in that direction to the left i can see there's no cars yeah and this little fucking prick in front of me decides to put the brakes on and I nearly go into the back of them because I'm just thinking, well, you wouldn't do that. 
But of course they do. So that's what I think a lot of accidents happen because of other people's stupidity. Definitely, it's always know? other people. And then of course, of course, <laughs> then you get shafted. I mean, and you know, there's there's many cases I've had um, people ram my car and get away completely scot free. You know, and do do crazy things on the road. All the accidents I've ever witnessed have, have been in the rear view mirror. Mm. <laughs> really. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I don't cause accidents. <laughs> I just drive away from them really fast. Oh, right. Um, <laughs> do you not pick up what I'm, I'm saying? Sa- I'm get, getting yeah. it, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm saying you that I like am a bad driver, but uh, I'm, I'm, I get away with a lot. Mm. Well, the, 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 me and driving, I, sh- I think I should do an, a whole channel to itself on driving. <laughs> yeah. I, no, you could probably, you've probably got one on YouTube already, haven't you? I probably talked Some a little rant, bit about yeah. driving, but I tell you what, people have no idea with me in cars. They're questioning, um, do women make good circles? And I think um, the OM mm. was a good one, wasn't it? Yes, that, that was women, women-led. Fanny? Yeah. Fanny and Bob? Yeah. She, she actually designed that, didn't she? Yeah. 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 That was. There's not many women out there, and I don't know what it is. I think it's because um, of the social dynamics of blokes and uh, the way they go out and sort of like you know, <laughs> let's get out and do something a bit naughty, mm. you know. And women are just like they're happy to sort of like have a you know nice night chatting with well, their friends. To be honest, you know? um, and blokes like doing weird weirdy shit, you know. And uh, women a bit more sensible sometimes. So it's hard to get a bunch of women to go out and do them. But the women that have been introduced to it go, oh yeah, fuck yeah, fuck. Yeah, this is good, but they wouldn't have they wouldn't have just thought about doing it, you know, unless they'd been kind of like dragged out by some well, blokes in the first place. When did we do the one for HTV? Mm. Um, because I wasn't aware of any other females that that were involved in circles no, at no. that time. What year was that? Um, <coughs> God, uh, we're talking two thousand, two thousand something. Two thousand, yeah. Because yeah. coming back into the area after ten years, and yeah. I've I've suddenly met Fanny and. Uh, Yes. Poppy and and I'm thinking shit when when I was here I was like the only female really yeah that that's was right. involved and you you paid a price for that didn't you oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. but um, there we are right are we missing anything but right uh, we we haven't used the we've got to get into this thing next week what we'll do is we'll try and uh, we'll try and say on the channel if you want if you're asking a question to us you put question to Matt or question to uh, Agent yeah. S, yeah. Then we know that it's one we have to answer. But when we, when are you, when you scan up and down quickly, as we do the uh, the yeah. live stream window, it's very hard to pick out what you're meant to be answering, what we're meant to be answering. So um, yes, and yes, Matt. Life is not fair, is it, Roger CCC? No, life isn't fair. <laughs> but so, sometimes to get rid of the um, the the pauses, like when you say, "Right, have you got a question there?" Yeah. If I'm it helps us sat here quietly for two minutes trying to find it, it's a bit yeah. unprofessional, isn't it? So. Yeah, it does does help us a little bit, but we'll. We'll get on to that. We'll find a way to kind of uh, to streamline this. But uh, this week wasn't the uh, the week of that. This was the week of um, finding out whether you could actually think enough to speak properly to put a TV show on. I c- I'm going to be amazed to find out what happened at the beginning. <laughs> I think you're going to be embarrassed. It didn't. It was running, wasn't it? The video was running. You, you had it. On the video fast forward. No, the, the video the was running. The gag run- didn't go down at all. The gag didn't go down at all. No, no because it was already playing. It, 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 when I came into it, it, it didn't. It didn't go from the point where I'd told it to go from. No, I think it did. But it. Oh yeah, you're right. Actually, yeah, because you had your mask off, didn't you? Yeah. yeah. So I, I, you jumped in at the beginning at a point that didn't work. So I don't know. Anyway, uh, God, let's have a look. What, Are you what? saying it's my error? No, no, no. Oh. Um, but I was going to say, pass the buck. I got a feeling that uh, you were you meant to did we we did the we did the are you looking to blame me for your no uh, no 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 we did the we did your bit see uh, sorry about this we did your bit and we'll have to talk about this later really but we did your bit no we didn't we didn't do your bit no, that's the thing not at see all. that's it we didn't I do your bit didn't even notice that to be honest with yeah, you yeah see see oh, we, it's just like. I can't believe that we rehearsed this, right? We rehearsed the beginning of the show, right? And okay, we didn't rehearse it and rehearse it and rehearse it. We rehearsed the beginning of the show and then we sat down and we did something completely different and it, and then it didn't work at all. The joke was shite. Well, the joke was actually meant to be really good, but it was shit. But it was meant to be technically and impressive, but it was shit. So, because it was to come in... Oh, quite what you think you're doing, because... I'm the host of the show, and um, I think I'd better be where you are, really. Let's get back to that. So that was that. 
I'm going to replay this later on and I'm going to be horrified. I'm going to be like, oh my <laughs> well, God. Well, do you know what? They, they seem to have come around. Uh, Roger CCC says, um, can I say that after a shaky, drunken start, this was really interesting. So Good. Thanks. Good. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah, it was, it was a bit, it was a bit touch and go at the beginning. <laughs> bit it was a bit touch and go i can't wait for you to see it i can't believe what what's gone on and i'm really really th- thanks to shell uh, agent s thanks to agent s you're sacked i'll tell you i fucking am i'm so sacked um the yeah. unanticipated that thank you saying that before you did i think thank you to agent s because she has really saved the day here um <laughs> i i honestly thought at the beginning if i wasn't drunk who knows maybe i could have maybe i could have actually read from my scrapbook yeah, of course you could have maybe done. i could have read yeah. from my scrapbook but you know what the thought of me doing it and being shit was enough to make me get drunk so i just fucking couldn't do it in the end anyway so it's like ah bollocks Live and learn. Yeah. You've got to take the rough with a smooth. I tell you what, do do television don't take drugs and drink when you're doing television. I've I have a few times because it's helped my nerves, but as I've seen tonight, um it really wasn't a good idea. I have a couple of times. I've taken I've taken um my, my beta blockers and uh antidepressants and uh and gone on TV and it's been absolutely brilliant and smooth because I'm like whoosh, whoosh, you know, I'm like cool as a cucumber. Yeah. I took him tonight and I was like, Hello, hello, matron, take me away. <laughs> I'm not, I'm, yes, there's a lesson to be learned in that. So, yeah, God. And I think we've missed a question from mm. Crop Dolly. They're saying you'll have to wait. So I'm just trying to see if I can see that. Crop Dolly, seems like your oh, question will have to wait. M- Matt, I didn't see this one at all. Yeah. Matt, tell us who was behind the Jesus formation last summer. Jesus. Which is the Jesus one? And you remind me now. Go on. Uh, Jesus formation. Do, 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 do. Jesus. Just trying to think. Which one is it? Dots overlaid. Oh, yeah. oh, that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know which one you mean now. Yeah, because it didn't look like Jesus unless you actually took two crop formations from two fields, and then in, using Photoshop brought them together, and then you saw that it was actually the face of Jesus. Oh, was, so we're talking quite about clever. the Sphinx in the Avery Stones, but with a circle. Mm, no, a bit more direct than that. It's like, imagine if you had a picture of a face and you cut it in uh, half. Uh, yeah, yeah, I understood what you and, meant. And then you kind yeah. of put the upper half up here, but it didn't look like a face. And you put the lower half down here, but that didn't look like the jaw and the chin. Mm. But when somebody went, ah, and you put the two together, you went, ah, look, it's a face. Yeah. You went, ah, of course it is. It's a face. But there were two separate circles and then you put them together and it's the face of Jesus. That's quite a clever idea. Nice, nice, nice touch. You know? Definitely, yeah. Unique. You know, it makes... It means you can't work out the first circle and you haven't got a clue what the second circle is. But if you work out to put one and the other together and Bob's your uncle. Yeah, didn't it's we, a good it's a good trick, isn't it? It's a good trick. we this discussion many, many years ago about doing different... Yeah, there's all sorts fields. of ideas. I mean, there's some ideas that I I won't mention on oh the, okay, on the, on the, on the show. That. There's some ideas. Um, Jesus has come into it for me sometimes. I mean, not that I'm religious, but I mean, I've had some good ideas to do with things that would be that would just be good like that. Um, and there's there's other other things because you know, like you've got these three dimensional, four dimensional. That's the one. Yeah, yeah. The four. Four dimensional, yeah. I'll put it up on screen so people can see. Yeah, thank you. There you go. Control plus, control plus, oh, and it, it'll it'll zoom. It. Yeah, it'll bring it up bigger. So for Firefox users that don't know how to do that, control and plus will make a picture, make the the screen zoom on Firefox, so you can actually zoom in with control and plus and control and minus. And then yeah. And it does that. Up. It's quite nice. So you can actually see pictures in Firefox that were quite small and bring them up. So, uh, yeah. People are very creative, aren't they? I mean, circles are definitely a lot more advanced than they used to be. What it was, you can't quite see that that's the face of Jesus, right? That is the whole face, yeah? And the other one was a whole face as well. But I think what you had to do is you had to overlay the two on top of each other. And then when you overlay the two together transparently, then you get twice the resolution. Then it looks like the face of Jesus. Now, that's clever. That's clever. It's like they've they've taken, you know, taken 50% of the information from one set of dots and 50% of the information from another set of dots to make up the image. 
That's, God, that takes a lot of bloody effort, doesn't it? Not really. You should know how to do this because you're into um, Photoshop and layers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've RGB. Thought, yeah, of course, yeah. Yeah, red, green, blue. Yeah, yeah. It's exactly the same principle. Maybe somebody had a colour picture no. and they took the red channel and the green channel and they made the red channel into a set of dots and I'm the green channel into a set of dots. And then there you go. You just see, it's as simple as that. I'm saying to go, go and put your energies into making a formation yep. that can... You know, to 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 design that in in a crop, yeah, with the intention of getting people to work that it out later. To me, is way too much effort. I just know where I could be. Oh, asked but to it's do a, that. it's it's the ultimate. It's the it's the pulling the rabbit out of the hat, isn't it? You know, <laughs> you get the applause. You've got to be really enthused. It really because you don't get you, do that. because you don't get the result on the first one, and you don't get the result on the second one, and you've got to wait for people to work on it and put yeah. two and two together and and when they get it it's like everyone goes yeah yeah yeah, yeah. everybody goes yay <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but then i suppose you get that in every industry in life don't you like there's always that that element of yeah we we cracked it we got we had the edge <laughs> we, yeah that's just what is that competition healthy competition yeah yeah yeah. It is great. It's good yeah. stuff. It's good energy as well. Again, Have we got any right? closing comments? Because we're just going past twelve, so yeah, we better yeah. wrap we're, it up. We're, yeah. uh, I'm, I'm dying mm. for a fag actually. Oh, I'm not going to use the usual joke. Yeah, data image. Oh, Matt, what's your favourite cheese? What's my favourite cheese? <laughs> I've had this before. Somebody asked me this question he asks before. It every week, it's, it's like a, it's a part uh, of the show. Yeah. Okay. My favourite cheese hasn't changed. It is Monterey Jack. Um. And Never sometimes some Monterey Jack, but it can't be Monterey Jack sourced and made in Europe. It's got to be Monterey Jack authentic from the States because they make it better and it tastes much nicer. Uh, stuff we get over here is not really Monterey Jack. It's like tea. You know, tea in the United States is not tea like tea you get in Europe. Yeah, they're, they're very different. So they're asking for Cassie. She's out know. the back. We'd have to we'd have to yeah. walk all the way down the stairs and open the door to get her. And, I'm, uh, I'm pretty much ready to go. So uh, okay, folks, we'll we'll get Cassie on next week. We'll bring her in and uh, yeah. and, and taunt the guest um, and and get hair on on the, his clothing or her clothing. So uh, that'd be fun. Yeah, and uh, thanks thanks very much, Agent S, for uh, bailing me out there. No I, I, I definitely needed uh, support. Yeah, Roger, we'll bring in uh, Cassie next week on the show. For, yeah. for a hello yeah okay okay yes we'll say good night to the dog for you thanks very much bring uh, back the pink hair <laughs> <laughs> I, I haven't seen your pink hair yet you haven't seen it no I know you keep dying the bath pink well I don't know what that is but yeah I should stop peeing Have in it beer, I suppose Matt. yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> stop peeing in it um <laughs> All right, then, cool. Thank you very much, folks. Thanks, everyone. Okay, so um, Circle Makers TV is uh, going to shut down now, but you can still get in touch with us on the circlemakerstv.org site, and my email address is on there. I sometimes do YouTube videos, but uh, they've been w you know, waning a little bit since uh, involvement with this channel. But um, if you've got anything that you'd like to uh, see on the show, let us know. And that includes um, if you want to come on the show, so let us know. We are very much up for uh, any suggestions of anybody that wants to help out with this show. And that's even if you want to just come on and, and talk your opinions, if you're a researcher or whatever, we're, we're happy to have you. But we are going to try and do something for next week, which is going to be quite unique. So uh, if, I can, if I can manage to wake up and not be such a lazy bastard and just get my arse into gear, it might happen. So that would be good. So thanks very much for tuning in. Um, yeah, like I say, next week might be a landmark show if I can if I can get it if I can get it working. If we can get this happening next week, will will be a landmark show. Um, it may not contain uh, it may not contain a an in studio guest, but it will be something you will have never seen before. I assure you. If I if I fuck it up now and I'm lazy, yeah, uh, yeah hang on, don't, it, yeah. don't be lazy. I'm I'm setting myself a challenge because I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to take the face of like if I can't if I don't do this now in the week, then I'm gonna have to have the egg on my face of saying oh look I am just a lazy fucker that you you'll have to wait till next week and I've done I've egged everybody on then. Well, if you think yeah. about it, if you did have a bit of a shaky start, everyone stayed with the show and supported you yeah. as a host. So yeah. perhaps support your your viewers by. Yeah. <coughs> Getting, getting my yeah. arse into gear. All right, yeah. okay, it's a challenge now. See, I'm going to have to do it. I, I work well when I'm under pressure. I'm, I'm better when I'm under pressure, to be honest. So, okay, thanks very much, folks. We'll catch you soon. So, uh, take care and uh, don't make any crop circles now. That's naughty.